so we are live let them join first we will wait for one more minute then we will start sure <clears throat> many have joined good morning sir i am student of igno or oh, students from igno to and from our, our college Vishal Bhattacharji, good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. So, without any delay, we should start. <clears throat> A very good morning to all of you, and welcome you all on the second day of international webinar. Today, we will cover four lectures, which will be given by four different eminent personalities. So. before going for the first lecture of today's first lecture i, I would like to share you uh, share with you few instructions like during the last lecture the fourth lecture you will get the feedback form and according to that you will get the e certificate so uh, you have to attend all the lectures because there will be there might be some questions in the feedback form so you have to be attentive all the time so without any delay so without any delay i would like to invite none other than dr bisrup ghosh he is a biochemist and neuroscientist he did his phd from kalyani university and currently working as a research instructor junior faculty at Thomas Jeff uh, Jefferson University Philadelphia US he is currently research focuses on parkinson disease als spinal cord injury and neuropathic pain he has published 25 peer reviewed international publications he also did a management graduate certificate on clinical research operations during his post doctor uh, doctoral training in addition to his research work he is the founder of health science website new newcredhealth.in to bring awareness on health issues and promote authentic information regarding biomedical research and development he is also the founder and ceo of neurocred consulting llc us he is currently developing a technique based health club health hub in india and it may start operation in india in early next year so we are wishing him all the very best and would like to convey my congratulation for his new venture with this word i would like to welcome you in this webinar and request you to deliver your lecture so please sir welcome you sir thank you very much uh, i'd like to thank the organizing committee first and also i i would like to specially thank uh, dr sina dr udhikari and dr mohsum bhattacharya uh, today uh, i'd like to mention uh, already dr sina mentioned about me it <laughs> too much uh, but yeah as a uh, scientist i work specifically on neuroscience area uh following completion of my postdoc i came to us and i work on a wide range of neuroscience area from hippocampal biology sensory biology parkinson biology als uh, neuropathic pain spinal cord injury so i cover a wide range of areas but today i am not presenting my research work so i am presenting in different uh, different topic that is on vaccine develop vaccine development processes so why <laughs> did i uh, did, uh, did i uh, select this topic so i realized uh, there is a infodemic infodemic means uh, lack of informations and a, a, a lot of mis uh, misinformations in the uh, pandemic time so that's why i just want to educate the students about the vaccine development processes so that some basic information i will provide so that they uh, you can learn uh, in future more and have some basic information on vaccine development 
So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so <clears throat> today I will discuss vaccine development and challenges in clinical trials. So first, what is vaccine? A vaccine is a method of scientifically inactivating a living organism or mi microorganism or its derivative. Basically, these microorganisms are responsible for a disease. So this mechanism enters in our body. So sometimes we developed immunity. When our immunity cannot fight then the pathogens, we get sick. Sometimes it becomes oats. So in, in general, in our body, we develop immunity by any foreign particles. So it's the same technology like the vaccine, uh, using a different technology, uh, we are developing immunity against a specific disease. So today in pandemic time, uh, SARS-CoV-2, Corona pandemic. So a lot of researcher around the world and different institute, different um, companies are working on vaccines. So I'm going through go through that. Uh, so we need to learn different types of vaccines. There are so many types. Among them, live attenuated vaccines, DNA vaccines, inactivated vaccines, recombinant subunit vaccine, conjugated vaccine, polysaccharide vaccine, protein vaccine, and toxoid vaccines. So I'm just explaining very little, little. So life attenuated vaccines is an example like uh, measles, mumps, and chickenpox vaccines based on these life attenuated vaccines. What happened in this case? So they basically, uh, the pathogen are getting weakened. Uh, uh, and the pathogenic capacity is destroyed. So when this pathogen enters human body, it helps to build immunity against the particular disease. So another type is inactivated vaccine. So by some external process like heat inactivations, radiation or chemical process. So it leads to uh, like uh, to make vaccines uh, like polio, influenza, hepatitis, T's and rabies. These are the vaccines which are prepared through the inactivated vaccine type. Subunit vaccines, some, some unit, like for, for a pathogen, let us suppose it's an antigen. So some part, some unit has been used for making a vaccine. So that is like uh, subunit vaccines. Toxoid vaccines, we know the so many bacteria release toxin chemicals in our body so these are the toxin so scientifically what we do with the detoxified toxins so we make it detoxified and and then use this as a vaccine so toxoid vaccine uh, like tetanus is a toxoid vaccine so similar is dna vaccine uh, another type so dna vaccines vaccine uh, you know uh, here is genetic material either dna or rna of the pathogen is used as a vaccine so uh, you you know that modern uh, bio, uh, pharmaceutical company uh, us based company is using mrna vaccine we'll go through that uh, let's move on so recombinant vaccine so there are also recombinant vaccine so this is uh, similar to dna vaccine basically so some part is be, uh, is incorporated like through recombinant dna technology like a vector you know uh, then a recombinant vaccine is prepared so there are polysaccharide vaccines, polysaccharide vaccines, like long polysaccharide chains. In general, it is uh, present in bacterial capsule. And there are so many uh, uh, like vaccines prepared through polysaccharide vaccine principle is like from pneumonia, meningitis to prevent pneumonia and, pneumonia and meningitis. So there are also protein vaccines. There is also conjugated vaccines. Now, we are going to move the origin and application of vaccine. So you, I don't know whether you have heard, uh, you heard in India, in India is like in seventh, seventh century, the Buddhist monks generally drank the snake venom 
to confer immunity to snake bite. So basically the principle is there. So today, what, what the principle is vaccine development, you will learn that all the vaccine development is basically the same principle. So they are drinking snake venom to make, that is the antigen, they're drinking and then antibody is forming so that in future for any snake bite, they are getting protections from snake bite, right? So the same kind of principle we we'll learn is applied in vaccine development. So there are, in basically in Asia, Central Asia, so in 17th century, so there are, is a process of variolation, which made them immunity against small spox. How? So cow, they collect the smearing of skin tear of a cowpox and injected in the body, and they found immunity against small spox. So that's the same. Look, the, the powder of the smearing of the skin, okay? So they have antigen, right? That our, our body develop antibody against the antigen and cowpox and smallpox, they both have structural similarity and then it works. So let's move to the uh, development. You will see uh, from 17th century, and the first vaccination, officially faxed vac uh, vaccination, the Edward Jenner inoculated a boy with cowpox and later challenged him with smallpox. So he's the first uh, laboratory, when, like the uh, method in, in scientific way, they prepare the first vaccinations. And later Louis Pasteur uh, made vaccinations for chicken cholera and later a lot of vaccines like you know you will find like 18th century and then 19th century 19th century a lot of vaccines like bcg oral polio rubella and finally right now in 2019 you know the ebola vaccine was approved so ebola is an, another kind of virus ebola virus outbreak is we heard very often that Congo or like in the uh, Africa, African countries. So they always have sometimes of uh, outbreak of Ebola. It's a deadly virus. So finally in 2019, uh, we have Ebola vaccine. So vaccine prevent diseases. There are so many diseases right now can be prevented by vaccine. You can see mumps, rubella, varicella, rotavirus, hepatitis B, hepatitis A. Major, major of the, these diseases, basically, uh, we have immunization program uh, and all immunization program we covered. Look, the national immunization schedule, we have all kind of uh, from after birth. There are so many vaccinations we have to do and it, it's basically protect us and it's develop immunity in our body. But right now, during this pandemic time, World Health Organization is really concerned. Why? No, basically they are thinking there are a lot of countries, which is like poor countries, they don't have proper infrastructure and they, uh, they are maybe uh, rising missiles virus. So, so immunizations program may be compromised. So that's another uh, next kind of uh, this, in this, uh, in this pandemic, is another danger is is uh, waiting for us. There are so many children will be in risks in future uh, for not getting time and not getting appropriate vaccine uh, in time. So if we we have to care about like our immunization program for our birth, like uh, after the birth, the child or the uh, kids, uh, so that uh, no vaccines can be waived. We have to follow up with physicians and make sure uh, we are doing uh, these uh, vaccinations properly in time for our kids. So now, COVID-19 pandemic. It started in 2019 from the Wuhan city, China, and now it is around the world. And we have a statistics. Right now, India is in third positions. So India's third positions is, is not a like, you know, 
headline. So it's just it's it's possible because India has a 130 crore populations, right? So there is is no wonder basically. I am not wondering whether India is 13. In future, maybe India will be second. In future, India may be first. So, but if you see India right now, only active cases is like 4.5 lakhs. In general, all the channel or media always express the infections, like 13 lakh infected. If you see, they already recovered, right? And now, either some people also death is so uh, unfortunate. 31,000 people already death, and now only active case is 4.5 lakhs in throughout the India. So we should count. What are the numbers right now active? So we have 4.5 lakhs active cases right now. So this number every day is increasing uh, right now. Let us suppose this is a case 48,000 increases in a day. And it is possible right now a lot of testing like the testing number of testing is increases, right? So the number is rising. So there, excuse me, number will rise because it's an infection it is right now in pandemic pandemic means when the infections around the world epidemic means when a infection disease is uh, occurred in a specific geographical area so that is epidemic okay now before how vaccine works i want to mention one thing when an infection occur, infectious disease, let us suppose any kind of virus, COVID virus. So what happened? So when infectious infection infection occur so for COVID-19, it enters through our mouth, nose, our eye, and then it's bind to the ACE2 receptor. Let us suppose bronchial epithelial cell. Okay. So it's bind with the cell and then enters into the cell and in the in the cell it will replicate it, it hijacked the replication process of our cellular mechanism then it's replicate and it's come out to, from the cell and make infection of the other cells so now so we don't have some people who are compromised with immunity so then they have some kind of severity, some kind of death, some people facing death. So our body has our body has the ability to protect our body from any kind of infection. So so we have immunity in our body to in like you know to protect COVID-19, but we don't know who are immunocompromised who will have asymptomatic symptom, who will have symptomatic sy symptom, symptomatic symptom may be mild, may be moderate, and may be severe. So very less percentage of people, at least up to 5% people having severe symptoms. Severe symptoms, especially respiratory compromise. So in that time, they need mechanical ventilations. That time, uh, they need oxygen support. So sometimes this kind of virus infection make secondary infections like pneumonia and the complication started there. So a lot of antibiotics sometimes not work because of antibiotic resistance. So a lot of factors right now making the system too complicated and the doctors uh, are trying to help using different kind of symptomatic, uh, like they're treating the patient using different kind of symptoms against the symptoms but we don't have right now no medicine right no new medicine some medicines right now are approved that is as emergency use medicine that medicines are repurpose use medicine repurpose use means that medicines is being trial for the covid-19 patient and found some kind of you know some kind of some kind of health like let us suppose some um, remedy severe for the severe patient covid 19 patient it's only uh, reduce some time of hospitalizations so that is approved for 
emergency medicine for COVID-19 because there are so many people right now are getting admitted in the hospital. So if the time minimize, so other people can get entered. So all there is a purpose. It's not like totally uh, functional. Totally, it will helping. But there are. Uh, this is the way basically. Uh, right now, all the country, all the regulatory agency trying to defeat the corona pandemic. So another approach: how we can protect us. A lot of people right now who are experts sometimes are talking about herd immunology, right? So herd immunity. So herd immunity, how happened? When a infection covers up, like in a population, let us suppose in a population, 70 to 90% people get infected by the, by the agent, let us suppose SARS-CoV-2 virus, then it will have herd immunity with it. But it is not in this case right now. Look, we have 130 core populations. And how many people are getting infected right now? 13 point something lakhs, right? So this is not, it is not the population of 70 to 90 percent. So herd immunity, who are talking about, we are with uh, vaccine, we don't need vaccine sometimes. Some people are talking, herd immunity will reach in a social media. So all are misinformations. Herd immunity is like there are also a lot of risks. Let us suppose COVID pandemic, like SARS-CoV-2, have impact on different ages differently who are elderly age elderly age they have let us suppose comorbid conditions having heart disease having lung disease having uh, other kind of uh, uh, kidney disease so they have high chances to be uh, to have severe conditions after being infected with the SARS-CoV-2 so we have to protect our seniors from this infect infection so that uh, we can avoid the risks. So hard immunity will induce us risks. So what do we need that? What do we need now? We need vaccine. We need new medicine because we have so many medicines uh, like, you know, for any kind of disease, any kind of disease, medical science is improved. But right now, as this is novel, like people know very less about it, very less how it is uh, affecting uh, several organs of our body. During the sever severe complications, it, it affects up to brain. So there are evidences. So it's uh, so that's the question. So right now we are looking for new medicines, effective medicine, vaccine because vaccine has the capability of protecting any kind of protecting infection. So during vaccination, during vaccination, what we, what, what we get? So we form antibody, neutralizing antibody. So that neutralizing antibody bind with the virus, binds the virus, and then through our cellular process, through macrophage, or they kill T cell kills it. We have immune cells in our blood. So B cells produce antibody. T cells kills the virus, infect, infect, infectious agents. So then it prevents the disease. There will be no disease. Sometimes uh, we need boosting dose. Let us suppose for influenza because it is changing so much. So we need every year the dose to make our immunity again you know we make our neutralizing antibody in our body so we don't know the challenge is here right now for COVID-19 vaccine development the challenge is as this is very new we need different processes let us suppose preclinical research so preclinical research when this uh, we using on uh, let us suppose the mice or rat or monkey so what happened? So the inf infections make some a, like inflammation, cytokine storm. So that's dangerous. So that's why a lot of uh, study right now on clinical research, they are trying to figure out how to minimize these kind of inflammations 
or any cytokine storm so that they will process to the human level so a lot of study right now i i'll, I'll show you the uh, number you will see they are figuring out these problems yes so this is the problem the challenges excuse me sometimes antibody dependent enhancement may occur that means when antibody bind to the virus in our let us uh, in our body so then what happened so they enters in the macrophage that macrophage kills then inside the macrophage it is replicating so it is again enhancement of the uh, infection occurs so this kind of um, this kind of challenges is occurring in the preclinical research so again there is rapid mutations of the sars cov 2 gene in the genome that is also a challenge in future whether the vaccine will be effective for longer time or we need to again uh, modify the uh, vaccine so basically the quality of such antibodies after the vaccine so it depends the quality of the antibodies depends on their avidity the specificity and the neutralizing capacity so the, here all the challenges are there whether they are specific to bind that particular uh, sars cov 2 whether uh, they are binding tightly right whether they are loosely so no effect right whether they are binding tightly whether they have really neutralizing they engulf in through the macrophage and then kill they have the ability the kill whether uh, you know our body have memory t cell whether they come and jump to, on the uh, in uh, um, sars cov 2 virus and kill them so there are a lot of issue right now under considerations and that's why uh, that's why the virus uh, the vaccine development sometimes is moving slow also so now i am going through some process how vaccine development happen in real life so initial phase the preclinical study the preclinical study basically uh, either in vitro study or in vivo study in vitro study on cell culture model study and in vivo study on rodent model or monkey primate models so then if the preclinical study looks promising that means they have some immunogenic capacity they produce some antibody uh, against the sars cov 2 virus then they want to check in human whether uh, it is safe what will be the dose is it safe like is 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 uh, uh, the uh, what kind of side effects are are are, uh, are getting like uh, what kind of side effects uh, we are we are seeing after uh, inducing the vaccine candidate so these are the primary uh, primary uh, uh, point of concern at the phase one and phase two and whether it is immunogenic that means whether uh, they are also producing some uh, neutralizing antibody so in phase two and phase three in generally 20 to 100 people uh, subjects are taken uh, in consideration and then if we get really good immunogenic it is immunogenic and it is safety and then regulatory agency give the permission to go for phase three and the phase three basically a thousands couple thousands up to 30,000 up to 50,000 previously it happened so people need to uh, to test and for different time one vaccine how many times the antibody is active in our body one month two month three month six month one year so so we do i need boosting do i need uh, like boosting uh, uh dose again so a lot of consideration it need to be figured out in phase one phase two and then in phase three what are the immunogenic what is the risk what is the benefit whether uh, we are uh, the benefit is high so if benefit risk ratio in time in terms of uh, the primary outcomes what we are looking for we are looking for antibody right we are looking for infection protection right so if we get the benefit ratio high benefit risk ratio high then we that is getting approved uh, for uh, for the for marketing so right now no vaccine is approved although one vaccine in china is approved that is uh, 
um, that is only for military military personnel, not for society yet, like not for the general populations. So there are five phase three uh, vaccine candidates. So you can see that one is University of Oxford, AstraZeneca, uh, one is from Sinovac, one is from Moderna, and one is from Wuhan Institute of Biological Products or Sinopharm, and one is Beijing Institute of Biological Products and Sinopharm. So China is really running first. And in the meantime, in India, Bharat Biotech Covaxin and Jidas Cadillac Zycov D secured approval for clinical trial from DCGI, Drug Control General of India. So we'll, we'll look what is the outcomes from the Covaxin on Jidas Cadilla in future. But yesterday, I think Covaxin uh, for the first trial at AIMS Delhi started uh, with Covaxin. Uh, Covaxin. So we'll uh, watch about the side effects, about the uh, safety, about the dosing, and hopefully in future we'll get uh, we'll know about it. Oh yeah, I I already uh, told this. Again, I'm just repeating because for the students. Uh, so there are two kind of one is in vitro and in vivo, and in vitro in cell culture study. This is pure, totally exploratory stage. We need to find out the antigen from the uh, in, infectious agent. Let us uh, let us think about SARS-CoV-2. So we have to find the antigen, which part, which can uh, part producing antibody against the SARS-CoV-2 infection. So we have to figuring out initial stage, which part, like the antigen, which part of the antigen or full of the antigen, what we'll take for our study. So then it will be tested in cellular culture model and in vivo study to check whether uh, it is, how it is immunogenic, whether they are producing antibody in animal. Now, this is from uh, this is from FDA uh, websites. So you can see the phase one in vaccine. Basically, uh, we have to inject healthy volunteers. In general, that volunteers never uh, have uh, uh, never had infected with the SARS-CoV-2. So now the healthy volunteers we need to uh, we need to choose healthy volunteers and then vaccine candidate can be injected and for 20 to 100 uh, 100 volunteers and then we have to check whether his vaccine is safe whether his vaccine is working whether is there is any serious side effect if there is serious side effect let us suppose sometimes in clinical trial not only this vaccine uh, case any any other drug any other drug every drug comes through different phases clinical phases if the first stage is there is so much side effect they need hold they hold the uh, study. They close the. They terminate. They need to terminate the study. So that's why uh, at the initial phase, phase one study is so important because to check the dosing and check the side effects. And uh, and then phase two um, uh, check the little bit efficacy, whether it is effective. So then, uh, if it looks promising, then it goes to phase three and is a, a lot, uh, thousands uh, volunteers is need more than thousands of volunteers we need to uh, make decisions by considering the benefit risk ratio whether it will be approved or not then after approval uh, a company gets licensing for manufacturing and marketing and but there is also one uh, phase phase four phase four is also there for surveillance surveillance means after the drug uh, or vaccine approval that is on the real market like on the um, real life and then uh, the data whether there is still surveillance is there whether it making uh, severe side effects so that is need to be considered again in real life so real life data need to be checked so phase four is important sometimes regulatory agency uh, was the phase uh, phase four study and let us suppose a lot of people is getting died using that kind of drug already applied already approved so then again the regulatory agency can ban the ban uh, uh, the or uh, disapprove uh, the drug or vaccine because of the phase four so phase four surveillance is really important so now i am going to talk about uh, recent um, recent vaccine development by oxford university and astrazeneca 
So very recently in Lancet paper, uh, medical journal. So one of the prestigious medical journal in the world. So they published the team, the Oxford COVID vaccine trial group published a report of their phase one, phase two data. Yes. So AZD1222 is the vaccine candidate. So this vaccine candidate was tested uh, over 1077 healthy people, but the age range is 18 to 55 years. So <clears throat> they got two important results. Basically, they say that vaccine candidate increases the antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. And 95% people basically in a one month, they, uh, they got their uh, antibody. And also they are expecting uh, the T lymphocyte, the memory, uh, memory T cells basically, uh, it also can uh, last for two to three months. That means uh, it can be like, you know, um, protected. It can be protect, uh, it can protect two to three months. So there are more studies need to be in future done because it is right now on phase three. Uh, phase three means it will go for thousands of people, several thousands of people, at least 20 thousands of people uh, to check the efficacy and the benefit ratio, whether uh, we need dose, uh, we, we need a uh, booster dose, whether the antibody is lasting from one year, whether the antibody is lasting for two years. That is, that's why basically uh, the vaccine uh, development takes a long time. Uh, like BCG, we take only one time. It exists in our body whole life. So, but influenza vaccine, we take every year. So there are so many different. So we don't know right now uh, whether whether this vaccine will go for one year, like will protect us one year after uh, taking the, uh, let us suppose it is getting approved. So we take it. So three months, six months, one year, how many months? Uh, we don't need to. We have. We will have uh, our immunity in our uh, in our body. So that needs to be studied. So that's why uh, it needs uh, time. So so many people right now. Every day in newspaper, if you go through, uh, they are asking this August, you will get vaccine. Is August? There somebody is saying is December is vaccine. They are starting uh, production. Yes, they can start production on their own risks. But ultimately, at the end of the uh, clinical trial. Uh, regulatory agency will check the benefit risk ratio and then they will approve then it will come to market so they can they can pro, uh, produce billions right now but but if the vaccine let us suppose really the vaccine don't work the antibody uh, the neutralizing antibody is not like so strong or neutralizing antibody is not like one month two months then regulatory agency can think about like so a different uh, options may come out. We don't know yet, but it looks promising. That's the thing. Hope. There is a hope. Uh, it is uh, forming a good amount of antibody and it is already uh, a memory T cell also can memorize at least three months. So there is a hope. So we'll hope, but we cannot say vaccine is coming uh, this August, this September, October. Until the, until the regulatory approval, it is not wise scientifically to uh, declare this kind of hype. And it's disheartening if some vaccine is coming phase three, phase three and, and, and is not approved. You know, a lot of uh, clinical study, basically on uh, Alzheimer's disease, you know, the Alzheimer's disease, there is no proper medicines, right? So a lot of phase three study getting failed, a lot of, so many companies, they're shut down for their neuroscience research. So in the phase three, so that happened. So uh, we have to, that's why I'm bringing basically clinical research, um, uh, this kind of uh, presentation for the student so that from right now, you know something on clinical research because in future, uh, India may be a hub of clinical research. So clinical research, uh, you can take the direction of your career also in clinical research. So uh, what about next, go the next slide. So now I'm talking about the Moderna mRNA 1273 vaccine. So this is also a promising, and this is also in phase three clinical trial. So it is, uh, it is from um, Moderna uh, LLC, uh, like uh, from Massachusetts based, yeah, uh, Massachusetts based a company. 
So they have mRNA. So they have this is the mRNA vaccines. So it's similar like uh, similar like in you know, uh, similar like a, a virus make mRNA, right? So then uh, replication mRNA transcriptions occurs. So translation occurs. They make protein. So similarly way this kind of mRNA. This is synthetic mRNA. You don't need more. Uh, in, uh, it is they can from the genome structure basically from the genome sequence they can uh, design the mRNA. They can synthesize the mRNA. So it is basically taking less time. So uh, for for the next level of study for the preclinical preclinical study uh, because of choosing of uh, choosing of the antigen. Sometimes choosing of the antigen I told it takes too much time for clinical preclinical uh, preclinical measure. So. We have to wait again for the phase three clinical trial. What is the update? Like what is the outcomes? What is the benefit and what is the uh, risks? So we have to wait until they completing phase three clinical trial. But it looks promising. We can say, yeah, it looks promising, but we cannot say it will come tomorrow or it will come in six months. <coughs> Sorry. So now they also published a paper recently so they uh, in a phase one and phase two study uh, they basically uh, made <coughs> they basically did dosing dosing study they have 20 milligram dose they have 100 milligram dose they have 25 micro uh, sorry all our micrograms i'm very sorry so 25 10 and 250 all our microgram dose they use in the vaccine candidate and this they want to see the immunity the anti uh, antibody how much antibody is uh, developed in our body so they found the 250 micrograms uh, is a, a good one and uh, but for 100 micrograms they need to boosting so that's a uh, that's a good thing they already uh, they, they already got the dose which is very good now in the phase 3 they should go with that dose and then they will uh, do, do a thousands of people and then regulatory agency again they will measure the benefit risk ratio and then the decision will come for the vaccine remember uh, uh, we need healthy volunteers then when uh, vaccine candidate will be injected then in our body immunity response will occur and antibody will develop right then a real infections a, a very light real infections of the virus need to be incorporated in our body associated with our body so that how much the antibody is protecting it needs to be judged in future so that is uh, that is the thing uh, all the healthy volunteers need to be in vaccine trial so now i want to mention that right now is a corona pandemic time so many so many events occurring every day in our life office closed university closed market closed small business closed or very limited so there is a uh, huge impact in our uh, in our economy in our uh, everyday uh, life in our uh, everything right uh, so in this time in this time there is a lot of mental pressure Everybody has some trolls. Uh, so there are infodemic. You should care about infodemic. Why I am talking about infodemic? I realize there is, in addition of corona pandemic, people are suffering from infodemic. That means wrong information. So many wrong information are fl flooding every day in social media and in newspapers, news channel. So that is you need to care about your mental health and carry about your uh, minimum preventive measure. So be careful about the infodemic. So now I, I would like to uh, I would like to encourage I would like to encourage all the students to explore entrepreneurship journey in future because young people is the future of our country so we have one third more than 130 course people we cannot get everyone get government jobs so we need alternative option we need to create jobs so 
you should consider entrepreneurship journey in your near future. So I have developed some entrepreneurship mindset in US last five years. When I was doing clinical research operations, then I realized I want to learn more. So what I learned, I participated in the university as postdoc associate. There is a postdoc association. So I participate for leadership roles. I act president, vice president. I, I learn with the university administrator. I, uh, I attend, let us suppose uh, a lot of uh, dean with the dean. There is a lot of uh, meeting, graduate council meeting. So we learn a lot of practice, how to present, how to act, how to behave, and how to influence people. So that way I learn something like, you know, I, I develop leadership skill in myself. Then I realize uh, I should try something uh, for my country. So then what I am th thinking as my capacity, but you have, everyone wants to do, but what we have capacity right now, you have to think what I have capacity. So I have to think like that way. We have to start small. I start as a small. So what I did, I started writing blogs. I have a website, newcred.com. Not this. What is Newcred Health is one year later I bring. So I wrote 135 blog in a one year. Every two day I publish on clinical research operations, different blog, different publication, FDA publication. So I learn a lot of thing on regulatory issues. So then I think, uh, then I thought, why not I bring a website which will promote authentic information for biomedical research and development and bring awareness in the society in health related issues. But how? Only the layman, layman needs this kind of help right now because they have lack of education, lack of knowledge. So I started with to bring Bangla, Bengali language. I did Bengali language. You can see there is a uh, Bengali language, all the uh, news and you can see all the all the very uh, important informations you will get in my website. I have English, I have Bengali and started limited Hindi. So I want to uh, develop a website in future in India, which will have, I have a dream, having every regional language. That's my dream, to make it for the layman. Okay, so let's see uh, where I can go. Uh, sorry. So now, these are the characters. So how I, uh, I am developing, uh, reaching to the layman. So I have strategic plan. So any st every startup, you need, to strategic plan. So you have to make a strategic plan. How I will grow? What is your aim? How I'll grow to them, right? So I make a strategic plan. Look, just one, one 30 second I'll uh, turn it on. If it open, is opening, no? Oh, is the only image is here? I put, I put the video link, maybe some technical issue. So. So um, I use different character and very, very easy way. I make every scientific information in a video to reach the layman. So this is one of the strategic plan to reach the layman. I'm just talking a uh, strategic plan. Okay, so this is my website. So uh, this is the new crack consulting and outsourcing. So I registered a LLC, Newcrad LLC in Pennsylvania, one year. So I did a lot of volunteering. How? I, I was associated with a, uh, with a consulting company who are doing FDA, IND applications. As a scientist, I work with them. I learn. I joined there. Let us suppose eight consultants in a meeting. I joined there. I, I was telling my view for a, uh, for a issue. Then they like it. So several times i was invited for you know as a volunteer for their meeting so then i learned a lot of practice so then i provide you know i connected one um cro in india uh, to hear one company for i uh, manage a uh, you know key talking of science like as a middle so i bring uh, because sometimes science 
if you are expert on science, you can easily uh, bridge a uh, consulting, like bridge a uh, event. So I did like that. I act like that. And, and right now, I form a company which I am bridging research and development. I am doing uh, bridging outsourcing. I am doing patent fi filing. If anybody wants to file patent in US, I can help. Like I am providing human research. So this is one of the strategic plan. So I made uh, this, uh, I learned this, and then I made a company here. So although it's very, very, very small right now, but you know, you have to start small. Well, that's why I'm, uh, I'm, I want to talk to you. This, you have to think small, but you have dreams should be so high. So now I'm right now, I'm starting uh, to develop a uh, startup in India. So last two years I was uh, in media, in media means on websites and I have a followers. Right now I have around 70,000 followers in India who are following my English, Hindi and um, Bengali uh, news page. So right now I have a follower, I have a brand. Now I am thinking bigger. So I just want to, uh, if it's, I don't know whether it will open or not. So just watch, this is my hypothesis. So in future, I'll go for in investors. Watch it, please. Sir, sir, we are not able to hear her, uh, so you can simultaneously explain the thing, sir, along with Okay, you are not here? Oh, I no, see. No. I don't know that. So video. basically, oh, sorry. So basically, I am thinking a uh, startup. You can see that, right? So using this arm, so it's a technology-based startup, which I am right now in development. In, I am developing into a software company in India right now. So they are developing. So I want to make a complete solutions basically for everyday life. So how? So this the. So I want to make a difference in services with empathy. I want to say with the empathy, with the uh, affordability. So I want to make this is differently. What you have seen, I know as in. So we are going to uh, reach out angel investor, venture capitalist, uh, and some of my friends already uh, committed for initial investment. So, Thank you very much. So, so this I know I don't know whether the sound is th there. So this is the startup. I have a dream, and I already progressed some part. Um, this is the tech based tech based technology based app is under development, and I I uh, several of my friends already committed for initial investment. So we'll start maybe next year, and then I will reach out a lot of investor in US and try to make it bigger and bigger. So I want to tell all the students, they think entrepreneurship. If you have leadership skill, I know all Indians like uh, kind of they are leaders. So if you if you see like in a college in a university, how much you are smart. I know you all are smart. So think think like that way. So think small, make a small group and think start something. We bring some idea and move progress. There are a lot of facilities right now, India government also giving. They have a lot of startup and uh, their money, they're uh, promoting, they're giving funding, but you have to be aware about it and you have to start your journey. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir, for, a, for such a means descriptive and informative session, sir. Sir, uh, we have few questions for you as there sure. are a bunch of bulk of questions, but we will ask only a couple of questions from you uh, 
due to the time constraint and uh, we will mail you the questions uh, so that you can reply it uh, on the personal mail sir so we need your personal mail uh, we are going to ask you two, few questions here sir that sure. is one asked by joydeep malakar sir how faster one can recover from this covid 19 infection does it depends upon immunity power how faster one can recover from covid 19 this uh, present uh, virus and does it, it depends upon uh, immunity look uh, so many people are talking about immunity immunity boosters but think about if we can boost we'll be immortal so we have a balance like you know if we boost immunity and no infection scan will be immortal so it's a fake words bad words so we have you know we we can we can uh, our lifestyle can improve some immunity which will have a strong immunity but you don't know uh, you know immunity can protect it or not like let us suppose a gym who did a gym he has a strong immunity let us suppose every day he's not getting infected by sars cov 2 yes so think about that way so many uh, false businessmen are selling different products i am telling them uh, is a fraud okay so but we have to make sure we uh, we have to be careful uh, take good meat uh, like a uh, good meal uh, foods drink a lot of water and make you healthy try to become a healthy and it's like infections take like up to 2 uh, uh, weeks and 95% people are either asymptomatic or uh, are very mild symptomatic and very high percentage people and chances are elderly people less but there are chances also uh, also younger people but younger people also very less so there are risk factor are there so that's why you should care about elderly people more uh, at home so that they don't go out uh, this is a hard time we have to uh, we can protect uh, we, we have to protect ourselves we have to defense ourselves so let's uh start defensing let us suppose is a test match we have to we have to play test cricket thank you sir thank you sir i think uh, joydeep you got your uh, reply uh, sir one more question asked by bisal debnath is asking can our body create antibodies of their own against this covid 19 is it possible of course so that's why who are uh, getting infected and then uh, then antibody is uh, generating in our body let us uh, when they are recovered antibody is with us and that's why the convalescent plasma therapy a lot uh, right now in calcutta or um, i know the calcutta that's why i am talking about calcutta medical college uh, in collaboration with icmr and iicb um, and 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 the west bengal government they are uh, they are doing convalescent plasma therapy so what is convalescent plasma therapy so when a people getting infected and then uh they have antibody right so they have a time so they are collecting the blood they are collecting the antibody the plasma plasma have the antibody then they will infused in the uh, severely infected people uh, like have have infected people no medicine is working then in, the, in one of the uh, one of the uh, kind um, uh, uh, emergency use this is one of the emergency use also uh, protocol to use convalescent plas- plasma therapy so so that plasma therapy comes from who are already recovered for covid-19 infection so the antibody comes for the recovered person so yeah did you get point yeah, yes sir yes sir we are very much satisfied with your uh, response sir now sir uh, we are not going to ask further questions because uh, due to the time constraint we will send you some few questions in your personal mail sir okay so no problem. Sir, Uh, thanks sir for interesting the attitude among our student about the entrepreneurship and you have covered every aspect of present situation of covid-19 and the present status as far as vaccine is concerned so you made our day sir sir it was a wonderful experience to hear you sir so thanks for accepting thank you very much well. namaskar thank you thank you so after hearing the first lecture now we will move towards the second uh, lecture 
of today's seminar international webinar that is that will be given by none other than professor kumar ebnazar k presently he he is working as a uh, as a professor in faculty of allied health sciences natural medicine and molecular physiology lab chittanad hospital and research institution chittanad academy of research and education he has vast post doc and work experience of 21 years from 1999 till date he is doing a project as a co principal investigator on anti viral activities of o sulfate low molecular weight chitosan from industrial waste of cephalopods against herbs simplex virus in vitro which is department of biotechnology government of india new delhi he is the research guide of six phd scholars along with supervisor of six pg and ug projects he has published more than 21 research papers in international and national journals he has given more than six numbers of invited lecture in national and international webinar and seminars as far as editorial activities are concerned he is a reviewer of more than 10 international peer reviewed journals so these are the huge contribution and achievements of professor kumar towards scientific education let's welcome him i welcome you sir and you can proceed with your presentation sir so i welcome once again sir Uh, thank you uncle <clears throat> i think you are now audible right i'll share yes, my yes. video i'll share yes, my screen yes. okay can you able see that once minute one second yes sir only thing you have to go for slide show otherwise it is okay okay now yes sir perfectly okay so you can carry on okay just if anything just let me know okay 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 i'm here okay. yeah thank you just just give me a second okay no problem okay yeah so i'm not going to show any uh, you know picture or anything so i just want to stick to the uh, objective of the web webinar okay so pedagogical approaches and learning in the higher education system that is after the covid challenge covid 19 challenge or whatever uh, challenges after or post covid 19 a very good morning to one and all uh, thank you for the introduction i will straight away go to the subject so what is meant by pedagogy so this is from you know it's a mixer thing uh, basically from oxford english dictionary the science or any method and practice or an art of teaching is known as pedagogy it may be you know anything like an ac academic subject or theoretical concept it essentially combine both knowledge as well as skill which is required for effective teaching in order to impart the knowledge of any subject it may be physics chemistry biology or mathematics languages or whatever so that should be a combined thing of knowledge as well as skill which is required to teach which makes some different in the learner that is very very important in pedagogy so that is the concept of pedagogy so what is teaching then when you come over when you talk about teaching and learning so it is a process indirect for a learning any kind of learning i'll come to the next uh, slides by inducing a behavioral cha cha change in the thought 
whoever listen to that there should be a behavioral change and you should communicate the message with some impact on the audience so it is also create some kind of knowledge awareness and feeling in those who are listening to that and which will help in bringing about the behavioral change in that particular person on the other hand we also as a teacher learn while teaching you know we get lot of information even from students and they ask something we used to refer mostly we used to do like that then we come to know so many things so there are a lot of teaching methods like lecture discussion seminar symposium whatever the modern thing we are now doing web webinar and there are some integrated teaching talking point sessions and we conduct use lot of conferences and workshops so what is the criteria of a good teaching so you should have a good concept that means you should have a thorough preparation or knowledge on the particular subject i'll also touch on knowledge of teachers later so there should be an organized content that is lesson planning you have to plan and do in an organized manner how the, we are conducting the web webinar now so it's a it should be a good quality content as well as the optimum quantity in that particular content and it also show some sequence of order in the presentation and it is always it should be relevant to the subject and most of the time it should be learner oriented so that the learner gets more out of whatever the presentation or class whatever you take so teach about learning so we have seen about teaching about learning this is again from two different dictionaries if anyone gain or acquire knowledge or skill in something by studying or through some kind of experience or being taught so that is very very important you need to study some people can study and understand some people they have to go uh, as an experience to get that thing and then if you taught or teach in a good manner then they will able to acquire that particular knowledge in webster learning is an act or experience of one that learns then knowledge and skill acquired by instruction or study same thing modification of behavioral tendency by experience so this comes like you know study is there experience is there and then teaching or being taught is also there when you come learning there are different types of learning like you know traditionally we have these four kinds active passive teacher oriented learner oriented where these active and teach learner oriented has the involvement of both teacher as well as active particip participation of the learner so this is very very important you have to actively participate both teacher as well as learner so that you will have a good kind of teaching and learning experience so there are a lot of types of uh, learning like visual or social learning through video image picture or graph through auditory or musical verbal like speech lecture or discussion and then you can also go for read and write that is like notes and assignment if they seriously and dedicatedly do that they will gain knowledge after that the last point is you should have a physical involvement or kinesthetic learning that is experience based practical oriented recreating something through lab work and field work this is how they get more rather than all other types so the focus would be on to create a learner to be think critically in any subject or any field and then they have to create something out of whatever they get the knowledge from a teaching so this is how when they have a critical thing and creativity innovation will come out of that particular learner or whoever involved in learning process from a good teacher so when you look at the methods so there should there is a teacher's knowledge belief value influence and practice similarly a student should also have in between the behavior that is whatever we acquire as a student and then the concept of interpreted in a subject specific manner from teacher there is a reasoning involved with teachers that is the most important part that is planning teaching assessing and evaluating and also a major part on transformation of knowledge to the learner so this is where we differ from student as a teacher and has a huge response response 
in making the student whatever they afford like whatever the environment offers them that will give them through action and activity a best learning outcome in whatever we are teaching in whatever they learn so this is how it works teaching and learning works through in a web or in a constant manner so what is pedagogical analysis that is simple like you know the term analysis stands for the type of analysis based on any pedagogy okay the analysis of a given content material in any subject or any topic which is carried out well in the spirit of science of teaching that is the art of teaching if you give your best then you'll get best out of that particular thing so this is how it works there are three different objectives at three different levels objective of teacher objective as an institution and objective of the learner when these three goes together you will ex explain or expose or you can get best out of that particular teaching or learning so what would be the objective of teacher so the objective or pedagogy gives or helps the teacher to prepare for a specific class what we used to do you know routinely these are all you know we know we are practicing that so you need design activity in support of creation implementation assessment of significant integrative learning experience for all students you should consider the student who may not be able to catch in once one hit or one uh, attempt so you need to consider the lowest uh, affordability of a student who can get the knowledge from any teacher so it provides a mean to deepen their understanding of the subject so you, they need to understand the subject first to provide actual teaching experience and helps to gain the professional teaching experience so to determine the student's learning style this is very very important and to modify the instruction accordingly so that they can able to get and finally we need to use the technology to improve the teaching so what is the objective of an institution so they need to create a relaxed and enjoyable atmosphere in the classroom so that they feel comfortable and learn and the outcome will also be more in relaxed or enjoyable atmosphere so to they have to adhere to the teaching policies and procedure they need to give a proper curriculum more specifically they have to set a specific learning objective for every subject or for every course or for every program and for that we need to design a proper syllabus and plan the lesson that align with the objective whatever we prepare methods and assessment then we need to view the teaching they have to view the teaching as a professional development so and also they have to help the students whenever there is a difficulties like whatever we are facing now and the other important thing is to identify a good teacher it's still a debatable thing how to identify a good teacher or who is a good teacher those are all you know varies with various people and mindset so what is the objective of a student so they have to get gain the knowledge and they induce the behavioral changes by effective teaching teacher is also plays a role here and to understand and apply the learned knowledge that is very very important they have to understand with which they have to apply that learned knowledge later and to obtain certification of the merit is very very important whenever this goes properly then there is a betterment of the society so they they serve for the society and the society get better based on this particular thing so this is called learning firm pyramid so in which way it you know there is a based on some kind of uh, Uh, research you know which one works very well lecture reading audio visual demonstration discussion or practice by doing and teaching others so teaching other other methodologies or teaching other which gives more benefit when the learning comes so rather if you give a lecture lecture for 1 hour or 15 minutes or 45 minutes they will be physically present for 10 to 15 minutes but mentally after that they may be absent only physically present mentally absent this is how this works so when you change the method of teaching and teaching through various modes then that will attract them more than all other learning methodology so what is specific learning objects objectives or we can say specific learning outcomes so that is the effectiveness of any teaching 
which is dependent on the competence of framing specific learning object by the teacher who teach that particular course for a program. So there may be some written objective for the course or even a lecture will help the student to learn more and more effectively when you have this objective, when you match with the program objectives. So it may be relevant or unequivocal, observable, measurable and repeatable or that is feasible. So it should be very feasible. So when you prepare that, you should think about these particular as, uh, aspects like the act where the learner is expected to do or act later that is a part of action then the content how the activity has to be performed with the content and the condition under what circumstances should the activity should be performed with the content then the criteria which define the desirable proficiency so when you make slos the task and criteria should be should go together task means all first three objectives like components like act content and condition will come under task if you have a task along with the task you have a desirable proficiency the criteria then that will give you best results in teaching so while framing the slos for a class or for a subject or for a program you need to have this a b c d approach that is you need to look out the audience and the behavior measurable behavior of that particular audience which will reflect on the specific learning and you should identify the condition that is the competency of using the learning resources like the aids whatever we use textbook or practice guides or whatever by the student it should be focused on that particular thing because whatever you take in the class they may follow or they may not follow or they may take notes or they may not take notes sometimes so but they go and refer the textbook and practice guidelines so the condition is very important here the competency of use of specific learning resources and then you need to check the state of depth or degree depth in the sense the learning expected or the degree of skill expected when they finish and go out of the program or college or even at every session that is very very important so we need to take into account of a b c d approach when you frame specific learning objective for all these things then teaching skills what about teaching skill it's a behavior the teacher which facilitate the student learning directly or indirectly as a teacher we play a major role and we have to be a role model for the students okay the teaching skill includes all arts and behavior of teacher which will maximize the learning capacity of the student for example for me books reading books or listening uh, sorry reading books or something will never make any sense whatever times i used to read i may not understand but if somebody teach me you know the art and behavior of the teacher plays a major role here when they say one time or twice then i'll understand i'll pick up and then i'll write, i'll write in the exam i'll show or exhibit that particular concept uh, thereby i used to get knowledge so it differs with people somebody may read somebody may listen somebody may watch where they get the knowledge or the knowledge, knowledge transmission knowledge of a particular subject can be done through various mode as i explained earlier so what are the teaching aids then earlier we used to have chalk and talk chalk and board then a little upper side to the ohp presentations then we used powerpoint now we have all online mode so this is how it works so online mode plays a major role need of the hour we cannot escape from that particular thing so very very important coming to the covid challenges covid post covid challenges it was first reported in india as we all know in january 2020 then the spread has gone global globally it's a global phenomenon now and lead to profound change in our social interaction organization and especially it affects or has a huge impact on education sector so this is the recent thing you know yesterday i have 
taken from some of the websites. So there are, like in India now, we have 12 lakhs, 87, 945 confirmed cases. But comparatively, it is good for a huge population. And the number of samples tested were like, you know, 15 lakhs or 15 lakh 50,000 or odd samples on 23rd. So in Tamil Nadu, it is a very huge number, whereas in Tripura, it is less in number, but it is picking up now everywhere or throughout India. When you take the global uh, thing, uh, yesterday's thing, you know, we have a lot of uh, countries now, you know, saying that we have the second wave or whatever, there is an increase in number in countries like, you know, Brazil, Mexico, and all other uh, new countries, they have exponential increase in the number of uh, cases now, positive cases. So when it will uh, end or where it goes, or when it will go for a peak or come down, or when we flatten the curve, these are all major challenges and question mark where we don't have any answer for that. There are a lot of questions, but there is no answer for that. For example, in India, we went for lockdown. So started with the Janata curfew on March 22nd. Then we have crossed five different phases of lockdown. Now we are in unlock or relaxation phase one or two, whatever. You have to keep in mind that these are all only for economical or financial relief, not medical. Okay. We simply roam around, we go and we go and do whatever we want. No, it's not allowed medically. We are not relieved from the particular pandemic as the number increases day by day with the unlock or relaxation. So we need to be very careful and we need to follow the guidelines which is issued by government or any central government or state government or even WHO or whatever organization. We have to follow that in order to reduce the number or flat the curve possibly within three to four months. So throughout the globe now, it's a globalization effect where we have encountered recession, there is a disturbed political, social, economic, religious, and financial structure. There is a huge loss and also a burden on global economy whenever we talk about recession. Because everything is closed or even if it is open, you know, there is no business. India being a largest democracy, we need to overcome this pandemic situation. Of course, governments are taking a vast measures for to stabilize or review the economy, which is a biggest task for a task for a country like India, huge population. Uh, as you know, it did already hit all the micro, small, minimum enterprises, hospitality, civil aviation, oil and natural gas, IT, agriculture, retail, food and beverages, and all allied sectors. So it's very, very important thing to keep in mind that we have to revive or take back the economy to at least a tolerable level. So what about the private sector or corporate sector? Because they are the major players in India now. They are the service providers and they have to withstand the crisis. Already there is a job cut and layoff, salary cut, whatever are happening around us. And state governments are doing their best to protect the people, but they need the central government help also. So the support of the central government. Apart from that, societally, on a social setup, there are problems with migrants, senior people, persons with disability, and especially with youth. You know, they are the pillars of India. And domestically, when you take at every home, you know, there is an economic impact now. There is an uncertainty of work, job, uh, salary, whatever. Then most of us are working from home. There is a huge burden. We all know that. You know, working from home is not easy. You know, uh, being in at uh, office. And being at home, lot of disturbances, you know, everything. So apart from the kids, so those are all vulnerable area, areas. Like, you know, they are staying almost four months now. And in many parts of the country, you know, online classes are going. Similarly, the higher education system. So it has a huge impact now. So I'm moving to higher education system now. So completion of even semester exams of 2019-20, even especially for the final semester students, Conducting the exam, declaration of result, it's crucial time, you know, there is lack of manpower. Only few institutions have done all this process. You know, based on, you know, there are a lot of uh, guidelines from UGC and state governments, whether to conduct or not to conduct. Finally, they came to the conclusion that you have to conduct for the 
finally a student so rest of thing it's fine in many states in india but still there is a big question mark whether to conduct or not to conduct then how do you declare the results how do they go for the next level of higher education like on a vertical progression or something like that so charting of plans for the next academic section that is admission classes for the next academic section without the exams then what about the placement there is a huge crisis on placement issues now those who have come out of the college they have to clear, get placement a job somewhere so re- what about research many many part of our many institution have closed the research labs then training we usually give training cannot be given through online mode or any platform so they have to come and do hands on then generally they will get trained or their skill level will improve so closure of this uh, you know the institutes it it has not only have an imp- impact short term impact but continuous learning of millions of youngsters in india will also be affected it also endanger the economic and societal consequences so what is the education system and post covid 19 situation <laughs> so now already we are in passive learning learning classing le- passive learning by the students so we need to consider their issues you know as a faculty member or teacher we do have lot of issues similarly they do have lot of issues okay for example there may be poor connectivity electricity affordability and there is some spa, smart phone issues and there was a news in i think in himachal pradesh and a father has sold his uh, whatever they have at home to get a smartphone for the online classes for the children or for his kid who is studying at seventh standard so this is how uh, we are in in a position or we are we are put up in a position like you know very difficult so there is a sudden shift to online or e learning without any planning so once they close down the classes by 23rd of march within a week or so we got the uh, guidelines that you have to conduct the classes online so now we are in e learning mode so these curriculums you know they, they are not designed for such format and students you know they used to spend long time long hours on gadgets that is also a big problem later then the student seems to lose interest in online teaching there is a welcome start then now there is a low level of attention because there is no monitoring or less monitoring mentoring the student is also not possible otherwise we can mentor the student and then this is a big uh, best practice where a mentor can do some good for his mentee then all the students are now in a self regulated learning so there are imp- employment issues as we already discussed so with the present system you know whatever we have adapted to e learning there are large number of students especially from rural areas or rural population are left out or they may be unreached with digital divide i'll come to the information later okay so the digital divide plays a major role in online system apart from students you know we teachers we are unprepared for online education of course now we are somehow cope up with the uh, uh, present day scenario and then there is a lack of institutional preparedness because it's a special kind of methodology not all of us are ready to face this situation or sudden transition so most of them conduct lecture on video platform especially zoom google webex or whatever this is not real learning mode okay we used to have i to i contact an explanation or in a classroom teaching if you go for a uh, e learning mode then you need to have a dedicated platform for teaching and learning where we use other platforms now but we should have a dedicated platform so what is the risk then the learning outcome may not be achieved with this kind of learning methodologies so teaching an assessment method that is very very important how do you assess you can ask them to write in google and then submit the theory paper or what about the practical lab components though you know very few institute have done their uh, adaptation to online teaching and evaluation method only hand we can say some handful of uh, institution have done that you know based on ugc guidelines or whatever it is very very difficult of course there are there are lot of low income private and government counterparts you know they may not have access to e- ict or e learning solution then what will be the answer for those 
who are lying under that particular criteria but of, of course though we have lot of other uh, negative aspects we have from uh, some positive changes because of covid 19 in the education system we have a new opportunity now on a positive side that will change the education system of the current scenario so worldwide is different because they are developed technologically they are much higher or uh, further than a country like india or developing country so here it is a time to bring about a planned transformation or reformation in this sector that is education sector sector we need to change our mindset okay we need to be more technology friendly or more technology oriented we need to equip ourselves learn ourselves and then we need to build a e learning culture now the students need to build e learning culture even you know many people like you know our senior professors and all no they are not used to even computer now they used to you know only go and teach or talk or chalk and talk method is fine for them because they believe that way they will deliver better but now scenario or things has been changed there is a shift to model of blended learning whatever now yesterday there was a, a, a presidential talk about blended learning okay by i think uh, nayak sir or someone or chakraborty sir so we need to have this kind of blended learning which will give a better uh, learning outcome for the education sector both face to face delivery along with online platform and this will be the future of the education system so institution teachers has to become more technology oriented we need to undergo training or we have to be trained to bring ourselves to global level of teaching learning and evaluation system so we need to promote new way of delivery and assessment of learning outcomes which need to be adapted by both institutions as well as the teachers because teachers plays a major role in transforming this particular thing so it also opens an opportunity for major transformation of curriculum development and different level of pedagogy so this is very very impact impactful as well as positive changes of post covid 19 in education system so you need to develop learning management system every institute has to plan and prepare or develop this kind of learning management system which helps to connect the student as well as the teacher or who is teaching the particular subject and it should be affordable to all you know it is all software based solution but it should be affordable to all so if you do that then there is an improvement of learning material in a common platform so it's a new way to design and deliver quality content and there should be always a transparency in academic setup when you go online then it will also increase the rise in collaborative work just what we are doing like webinar web, webinars around the world right now so what are the risk then okay we are talking about a positive changes and what need to be done how we to improvise ourselves then what is the risk so this distance and e learning will reinforce teaching and learning approaches or it may not work well most of the time because we have lot of other difficulties also so the educators also overwhelmed and unsupported do their jobs so the protection and safety of the children is also important and it is very very hard to safeguard them because this closure of schools will widen the equity gaps and also we have the major impact of poor experience with all of whatever education technology or network during the pandemic uh, situation this also will make this process some harder to get and use with the future uh, generations so when we talk about quality of education system it predominantly uh, decided or lied on the quality of teachers you know we usually think that faculty with good academic background and pedagogic potential alone may excel in the teaching and research this is very very important thing throughout the globe or whatever so it also defines the character and brand of teaching and research programs offered by any institute so the teacher will make or uh, defines the character and brand of teaching and research of any institute so there should be a massive uh, expansion of 
technology or technological support whenever there is an expansion of number of students and teachers. So the education institute, they have to promote the quality of education in a way they have to adapt the technology and then support the student as well as the teachers to improve the quality of education system. Then what about the quality of online education system? So you need to establish quality assurance mechanism and benchmark for these kind of sophisticated terms of online teaching or e-learning platforms. There's a rapid growth in India right now. There are a lot of people offering you know, courses for even school children. If you want to have a particular thing, you have many e-learning players. They offer different programs or courses with the same content a different level of certification methodology and assessment methods. But what happens to the quality? You know, when you have the same set of content or course for different program across different platform through e-learning, then there will be a compromise in the quality of courses. So this is a very major concern whenever you talk about the e-learning apart from educational institutions. So we know a lot of established online learning, which is promoted by both government of India and other MHRD or something like that, UGC, even UGC. So some of the platforms like Swayam, NPTEL, even we offer MOOCs close, and there is another uh, portal called EPG Parasala, which is an initiative of MHRD. And apart from that, you also have National Portal of India, National Digital Library, Apart from that, there are various open education resources where the teaching and learning and research material are there in an open public domain with some intellectual property license where you can pay or sometimes it may, it may be free with the support access to knowledge. So there are a lot of platforms available now to develop the knowledge or to learn things out of our syllabus or out of our program or course, whatever. There is another thing also national that is uh, Madan Morgan Malvia National Mission on Teachers and Teaching. This is also a good site, which is again promoted by MHRD and recommended by even UGC also. So can we afford or are we ready to offer 100% online or digital education in India? There is very, very big question. Our question mark, our uh, responsibility which is on every individuals so teaching and learning through ict or blended learning is what we suggest that is both talk and chart that is face to face and integrated digital content online will give a better opportunity for both teachers as well as learners that will give a positive outcome in the current scenario but is it possible that's a big question mark to have face to face at, at present. But in future, both a blended learning, both face to face and online would be a good teaching mode where you can expect a better uh, learning outcome in, the, in every sector of the education system. So we need to build an e culture. For example, all the teachers, learners, and administration to promote and build this e culture, which will give a positive approach to the learning system. But the COVID-19 impact has given more flexibility. For example, in online education, we are all now online. We are doing everything online. So sharing an expertise is through online education is the need of the hour. Because of the restrictions, we cannot go for face to face or we cannot ask them to come and sit in a classroom where you can teach and then you can better impart the knowledge. But online education is the need of the hour. So what the, when you look up the Digital India fact sheet, the total population around more than 138 crores now. And we have 116 crores of mobile subscriptions. It may be, you know, some people may use one or two or three SIMs in their names. It all includes 116 crores. Where you have the smartphone uses around 45 to 50 crores. Not even half of the populations of India is using smartphones. Then there are like 56, 56 crores of internet subscribers. Okay. So the number of villages in India, 
is one lakh sorry one lakh eighteen thousand. Where we have real problem now. You know when you experience even in our uh, institute when we try to conduct the exams online, there are certain students. Uh, you know in Andhra in Tamil Nadu they have no connectivity in their village. They have to come. One of the student has to come four kilometers away to find a browsing center to do his whatever online course or uh, assignment or seminar, whatever. He has to travel 20 minutes and then connect to this internet, you know, uh, through his mobile. And, uh, you know, other thing, you know, some states like Union Territories like Andaman, where you have climatic changes quite often, it is very difficult to connect or ask them to come and sit in the classroom. So this is how the Digital India is now. So we have uh, 116 crores of mobile subscriptions, but not even half of them have internet facility and the villages are more where there is a poor connectivity and smartphone uses is also very less. But we are promoting the e-learning or on online learning for the future. So what are the challenges in education sector? There is always a gap between student and education institutions. Okay. That is very, very important. We need to inform or inform the student or give information to the student in a freer way to change to a particular mode of teaching and learning experiences. Then learning online courses or e-books. That is very, very important. Now everybody is, you know, rely on that particular mode, either e-books or online courses. It should be student friendly, learner friendly, whatever. So adapting a CBA system. CBCS, Charge Bread Credit System with core, elective, value added courses, soft skills courses, internship and projects, which is industry with industrial collaborations, makes, makes life simpler because we have a lot of experience with that CBA system. And then uh, those who are having internship and project in industry will have a bet better opportunity. And when you have this elective system, our CBA system, they have the freedom to choose whatever the subject they want to study or whatever the course they want to do. The use of ICT or virtual lab should be more flexible and this may be a new way of pedagogy in the future. What we have to do, management and institution, they have to plan, prepare and equip themselves to offer this kind of new way of pedagogy or teaching and learning system. What we can suggest? As we, I already mentioned, we can revise and approve a uniform curriculum or evaluation method through online platform, through appropriate bodies for better delivery in schools, colleges, education system, and university and institutes. And we need to equip the skills in students. It's very, very, very difficult. You know, always they look for some placement. Better make them self-employment. So make them to be entrepreneur. So self-employment is better than or rather look for the placement. So you need to equip the student or equip the skills of the student so that, so that they can be a uh, starter or startup. They can do some kind of startup work where they can establish a bigger thing. Like, you know, you have to think small and then dream big and then you have to expand in a bigger way. So this is how we need to make the student as a self-employer or an entrepreneur rather looking for a placement when they finish their courses. So we need to train the teachers on different mode of teaching, learning and assessment platform and online resources. You know, now there are a lot of FTP, FTPs are going on, faculty development programs everywhere in India to teach the teachers. You know, that is very, very important thing because they are the middleman who connects this particular technology and the students to give a better outcome of the learning. So we need to provide good academic ambience for seamless integration of current methods to blend the online platform. That is very, very important. That is the responsibility of the management or every institution. What is the challenge for the colleges or education setup? Of course, the safety of our community is very, very important till we return to normalcy. There is always a chance of community transmission because the institution and campus life where everybody has to come together and then they enjoy the life and there comes, it is a unique place 
or unique vulnerable place for transmission. So this spread of virus within that particular region is very, very dangerous because we don't have any evidence-based treatment or any prophylactic uh, treatment for that particular cause. Even vaccines are on the way as we have already seen. And there are some drugs which are approved now which will reduce the mortality rate or reduce the symptoms or reduce the uh, incubation period, that's all. So these are all some of the big challenges where we cannot open the colleges or schools right now or the education setup right now. So towards the past, sorry, post-pandemic pedagogy, what will be the future? So it's a beginning of transition to virtual learning from face-to-face -face or chalk and talk or whatever PPT, a smart classroom, we need to go or transition from ourselves to a virtual learning. So there should be an extraordinary shift from face-to-face -face learning to emergency e-learning. This I will call as emergency e-learning, okay? So face-to-face -face teaching and learning, it should be de-scrutinized for now. We cannot do that because there is no guidelines for this as of now from any government within India. So we need to understand, justify, and normalize the emergency e-learning because this will be the education delivery mode or norm of the future. So again, whether it will give a value for education, it is still debatable, but we need to go on this particular thing, especially after this pandemic situation. With that, I will thank the organizer and everyone for listening to me. Education is all about academic excellence, personal relationship, and social responsibilities through a very well-structured curricula, teaching, and learning practice. I like this picture. I got it a few months back when they started the e-learning or online learning process. The teacher who explains from home with the blackboard, and you see the setup. This is how we struggle and we try to give as much as possible for the betterment of student and the community and the society. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, such a wonderful presentation and nicely explained presentation, sir. So thank you for that. Sir, we have few questions uh, from the audience side, means participants. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so we will have only two uh, out of the 10. So these questions are asked by Pavel Hassan. Pavel Hassan. Sir, when are the individuals becomes contagious? And and how long the virus survive on surface? It may be slightly uh, differ from your topic, but uh, if you want, then you can reply, sir. So when a person become contagious, now we are in contagious state, not a pan, not in a pandemic situation, right? So the meaning for contagious is different. It's when it passes from one person to another person, it becomes contagious. When a person become contagious, you know the pattern of this. Uh, whole thing as of i am not a covid researcher or covid worker okay uh, from whatever i have read or whatever i have experienced throughout or learned uh, from other people like you know once you get infected or affected with the virus it will show the symptoms at one or second third and fourth day any mild symptom of fever cold or something like that and before the onset of the symptom, you will start spreading to others. Okay, you don't know that you are infected or affected with the virus because the symptom will come only on third or fourth day. But even before that, three days before that, you will start spreading to other people. Okay, this is how you become contagious. Am I right or I am not sure whether I am right or not? Okay. Okay, sir. We are very uh, much lucky to hear you and your responses, sir. One more question asked by our colleague, uh, Sir Orijit Das, sir. I don't know even the term, so I am asking you explain how mnemonics enrich pedagogies. Sorry, what is that? Mnemonics. Uh, it may be misprint or I don't know, mistyping. M N E M O N I C S. M, -M, 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 -M mnemonics. 
Mnemonics. So, uh, mm-hmm. Mnemonics. I so, really have no idea. Yes, 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 yes. Because it may be a typing error or I don't know exactly. No, it is, it, it is, it is, uh, it is, it's all like, you know, something like a uh, memory aid. Okay, okay, okay. I think memory aids or something like that. Uh, there are a lot of strategies and techniques in teaching and learning. Yes, okay. Yes. Memonic is something like related to memory. I, I believe, I'm not sure about that. Something yes, like yes. memory, you know, you know, my teacher, you know, they all, you know, they don't have notes even. They have everything in their mind and then they simply come and write in the blackboards and then explain whatever max or physics, chemistry, biology. They draw. They draw the diagram and then they explain to us. Whenever they draw, we used to watch that and we also draw in the notebook. Then you have now exposed that particular drawing for two times. Mm-hmm. So that is how the memory comes to us us basically for me okay mm-hmm. somebody need to explain us in a better way so that i can get it is all their memory you know you need, it is not like you have to memorize that you have to experience that and give away your best to the other people that is the learners that is how right. you can improve you know yourself as well as the uh, student community so any even most of the people seniors used to do that they just go to the uh, classes and then they, they just do chalk and talk where we use, you know, PowerPoint and whatever, the learning uh, management system, all kind of smart uh, ca- classrooms, you know, whatever we know, you know, we have to teach to them. It's not simply reading and then going with the PPT. You have to explain them in a better way. Mm-hmm. Right, sir. Right, sir. Perfectly. Okay, sir. Now, uh, the next one is not a question. Uh, maybe uh, opinion. You, uh, they need your opinion that as per you, which one is better one, uh, effective one, uh, online mode of teaching or offline mode of teaching? They are asking, uh, they want so to know. I, your... I, I insisted on blended teaching. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Both online as well as offline. Yes, yes. So you need to get the, you know, videos and whatever from online. Let them, let them see that you show them and then you teach them. Eye to eye. That is very, very important. Very important, sir. So now, you know, with the online teaching, you know, they just switch off the video and we don't know whatever they do. Okay, what they are doing, we are not sure about it, but still we are teaching. Yes, yes. This is not an effective mode, but in the future, there may not be a choice, right? With whatever government, uh, you know, promotes new courses, NPTEL and whatever I have explained, so I am all online. Yes, yes. You may get a dual degree in the future one uh, one uh, classroom and one online that is also possible mm-hmm. but the right. effective teaching is when you have direct contact with the student in a classroom when you teach them you explain them and you ask them you explain them that is very effective method right 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 sir thank you sir sir uh, your lecture covers all the segments of participants it may be teachers it may be for the students so thank you for that and thank you very much sir, for sharing your in-depth knowledge of teaching and learning pedagog- pedagogies yeah, it, was welcome, really, <laughs> sir, it was a really a dream come true for us sir and we are hoping that we will uh, he, we will hear you in future again and again sir so it's uh, our yeah. to you sir so thank give you. us time uh, again and again when we require sir and thank you all for right. accepting our request thank you all thank you very much take care and be safe Thank you, sir. So, now moving towards the Sir, you are uh, Sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, okay. it's fine. Yeah. Okay, now we are moving towards the third lecture uh, of today's uh, webinar, which will be given by none other than Dr. Buddhi Sattu Sahasar.
Presently, he is DST inspired faculty in CSIR, IG, IB, Delhi, India, as well as the Royal Society SERB Newton International Fellow, University of Oxford. During his PhD, he worked towards the identification and characterization of allergens in pollen grain. As a national postdoctoral fellow, he got an opportunity to train himself in embryonic stem cells, culture, making cell lines, microscopy, and advanced mass spectrometry. During his tenure of DST-inspired faculty, he is involved in developing an essay of biomarker discovery to distinguish patient from COPD, asthma, and chronic bronchitis using quantitative mass of spectrometry. He has also the collaborating with, uh, been collaborating with multiple research across the globe to understand the structure and liquid, uh, lipid interaction of mitochondrial transporter. He is also getting involved in understanding the SARS-CoV-2 interaction with the host protein and screening drug using advanced mass spectrometry. So, Without wasting any time, please welcome the young talent in the field of research, Dr. Buddhiswatu Saha. I welcome you, sir, and you can proceed with your lecture, sir. So I welcome once again, sir. Hi. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ankun. Uh, welcome, sir. Can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But only you have to go for slideshow. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Perfectly okay. Hi. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ankun and others for inviting me to give this lecture. So, you know, I have never been working uh, on any, any kind of viruses. So, but I had uh, worked on some kind of, uh, basically my work was on protein chemistry and uh, protein biology. And I did some amount of, uh, epitope mapping which is you can say a bit related to making vaccines in my phd and i work on a, a technique called mass spectrometry which is used in various uh, biological fields for for asking various different uh, biological questions um, so uh, i so this lecture i would like to give on the uh, the covid 19 the trip the treatment avenues which are there and uh, the vaccines so it will be a bit uh, overlap with uh, dr bishwajit kosh who had uh, spoken earlier today um, but in some cases i will be a bit more uh, de detailed and in some cases i will be less detailed compared to him so um, but this but the whole idea is just to give an overview about uh, what uh, this covid 19 is and how it has affected our lives and what are the possibilities of any kind of vaccine uh, which may, or any kind of treatments in near future which we, we may have. Um, okay, so uh, I'm presently uh, uh, not in Oxford. I'm in Kolkata. I'm locked down uh, for four months. We are all, this, all on the same platform because of this coronavirus. We can all understand how it has actually affected our lives, our daily lives. And um, so, yeah. So uh, initially when uh, I was here in the month of April and March, so I, I saw a very interesting um, uh, picture in somewhere in Facebook or some someplace. So they said that the most negative word of 2020 is positive. So we, uh, we can understand that if somebody is positive for, with coronavirus, it's one of the most negative word. Yeah. Uh, so uh, during March, uh, so there were a number of newspapers which was coming out one after the other in the whole world that they were saying that even in India and, and UK and then many other countries. So this was the headlines of most of the newspapers. Um, you know, so in India, it, it is also a same kind of a situation. Um, you can see this is a migrant people who have been traveling from different parts of the country and India has never seen this kind of uh, transfer of huge amount of people since independence. Uh, like people who are coming from Pakistan and from Bangladesh to India and 
into the, into those countries. So this has been a huge exodus of people, and only because of an unknown and very invisible uh, microbe, which is called a virus. So it has not only touched India in abroad. Just when I was leaving Oxford, I was uh, so most of the uh, the, in the supermarkets, the foodstuffs were empty, and there was a real kind of a crisis situation. The aircrafts were almost grounded after a few months, like in the month of April and May. And, you know, the Eiffel Tower was also closed uh, for an indefinite period of time. This is uh, in the Colosseum in Rome, where huge amount of people go all over the year round. Uh, but uh, now it is completely deserted. So this picture was quite long time, but now I think people are going. So this is what is. So what the problem is that uh, the the virus which has been uh, and the outbreak is not very new. So the, so the virus have been with us for a long time. So the earliest was in 735 AD, uh, which is the Japanese smallpox virus, which is almost killed one million people. And the smallpox came then. 56 million people, and the Russian flu, and then Spanish flu, which most of us know, kill almost 40 to 50 million people. And uh, yes, uh, so compared to, uh, so coming down to the modern viruses like H1N1, SARS, Ebola, and MERS. So this is uh, a bit old uh, information. So up till now, you can see that almost six. 80,000 people have died because of these things. Up till June, it was 450,000. So this is just uh, not to scale, but this is the information is obtained from World Economic Forum. Um, so we can understand that uh, the viral infection was with us for a long time, and it has been killing a lot of people. So, uh, so just before I would like to explain, because uh, the, it would be a bit of technical. Uh, I try to keep it much more as easy as possible because. Uh, there, I understand that there are different kind of people who are in this lecture, uh, who are all, always not from science background. But just to make a, make a very brief introduction, so we, so we have in our body, it's called DNA. So DNA uh, kind of transcribes into RNA, and RNA gets translated into a thing called protein. So the protein is the most important part of our body. So it is not the protein which we take, uh, like the protein, we also make some uh, particular biomolecules, which is called the proteins. And these are the molecules which actually do the most of the work in our human body. So, uh, so but this DNA contains all the information which is, uh, uh, which these proteins are, are being made. So this intermediate is an RNA. And so this is how the life goes on. And the DNA replicates and then the RNA is produced and then you can make a new, new amount of proteins and all these things. So, so the proteins are the actually workhorse of the cell. So this is the disclaimer I wanted to just to main, uh, show you how uh, the life works in, in, in our human cells. So, but uh, so, what is a virus? The so virus is just a submicroscopic infectious agent that replicates only inside the living cell of an organism. So, if you keep a virus outside, outside the living cell, if you keep it in a in a tabletop, you can keep in a chair or or any anywhere else, it will not do any harm because it cannot grow. So, only it can grow only if it is in a human uh, cell. So, so just to give you an idea what how a virus looks like. So this is a E. coli. E. coli is a bacteria which many people you may know. This is, uh, so, so this is a structure of 500 nanometer. That is Ebola virus looks like this, and then there is another thing called bacteriophage which can again infect the cell, and there is another uh, thing called the rhinovirus which is another kind of virus. This is a, basically the size of the viruses. So you can understand. Uh, and a virus can affect uh, both a bacteria. It's a, it's a bacteriophage. It could be mammalian cell, like HIV is a virus which actually affects mammalian cell. It can also affect a plant. So this is tobacco mosaic virus which can affect a plant. So how a virus uh, affects a human cell, human human body, and how it actually uh, makes itself replicates is a very interesting process. So basically, the the virus. Uh, so if this is a cell surface. This is a cell surface, and this is a virus, which uh, the virus always affects a receptor. And with, when it affects a receptor, it will uh, uncoat. There is a there is a kind of coat protein 
on the virus, they, it will uncoat and it will release the material which is present inside the virus inside the cell. Okay, then, then it what it will do is that it since it cannot grow by itself, it needs some instruments or some kind of mechanism for it to grow. So what it does is that it hijacks uh, cells replication machinery uh, in this way. And in this way, it ultimately produces by various complicated me mechanism, it ultimately uh, produces uh, uh, individual virus particles. And this can goes on for a huge amount of time and a huge amount of virus particles can be made in this in this method, uh, like, like hijacking the cells of, of the host. So, um, so what is COVID-19? So the COVID-19 is also caused by a virus, which is called the family is this Corona VDD. And the name of the virus is SARS-CoV-2 because it is very much related with another virus called SARS, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome virus. It's almost the same type of virus. Uh, and it is, it is uh, spread from an animal. So it is called a zoonotic virus. Um, and there are 11 different strains of this COVID-19, which has been found in the whole world. So why it is called the COVID-19? So basically the COVID-19, it comes from the coronavirus, CO, v, virus B and D, the COVID and 2019. So this is, this is how the name is made, uh, the COVID-19. And, uh, okay. So uh, just to give you an uh, understanding, because when I will try to explain how the vaccines are made, I, I need to explain you uh, how how the virus actually looks like. So so you know this this virus has four structural proteins, right? So which actually make the virus gives its own structure. So one is a spike protein, uh, one is a membrane protein, and one is an envelope protein, which is also present inside. And there is a nuclear protein. So the inside the virus, this is the uh, nucleus, which I remember I said you DNA, RNA, and protein. So this is an RNA virus, right? So this all all, all of this, so it, it is an intermediate between DNA and making the proteins. So this is an RNA virus. Uh, and this RNA virus is contains many nuclear DNA bases, which is uh, 2981 nucleotides. You don't need to understand so much of it, but it codes for 29 uh, different kind of proteins. So these proteins, so among these proteins, there are four structural proteins, which gives the structure of, this, of the virus. And there are 25 non-structural proteins, which is not responsible for making the structure, but it is responsible for other purposes for the virus to uh, grow and survive in uh, uh, inside the cell. So one of them is the blocking translation, uh, like to make the blocking translation of the human cells and then viral integration. So how it will integrate inside the cell. So all this information is given in this 25 non-structural proteins. And it also starts to block the immunity of the uh, of the host cells uh, and then the blocking the translation of this thing. So how does a COVID-19 virus actually look like, you know? Uh, so so this is the actually the structure uh, in, inside the microscope. So microscope can never give you a very beautiful colored image. It will always give you a black and white image. So now next what people do is that they do some kind of uh, artificial coloring uh, where they can give beautiful image of this uh, of these viruses so this is the actual virus uh, picture and you can see inside the cell there are so many small these blue colored virus particles and in this picture you can see these virus particles are coming out of the cell in huge amount and this is another picture which you can see the virus and uh, this is a scanning electron microscopy pictures where you can see a almost a 3d image of the virus or cells. And you can see there are so, so many of viruses which is coming out of the cells in, in an infected person. So these are all the autopsies of, from people who have already died and, and the, from the lung sections, which they have taken these structures from these uh, cells. And you can see huge, huge amount of uh, these virus particles are produced inside, the, inside that particular 
person. And if you want to see, uh, if you if you're interested in seeing how this viruses look like, you can go into this website and you can uh, see these things. Okay, so uh, just to give you an understanding that how the the coronavirus infect the human cells, you don't need to. Uh, be so much involved about this uh, detail about it. What I want to show you is that, so if this is a virus and it, it, it actually, if you remember, I said to you that they have a receptor where the virus first attacks. So the, this receptor is called the ACE2 receptor. This is the angiotensin C receptor, which is present in many other cells, like not only uh, bronchial epithelial cells. So this is a, I've shown bronchial epithelial cells because these cells are present inside the lungs. So in on the cell, on the surface of the lung, this ACE2 protein is there. And then the virus comes and uh, targets this receptor. And with this spike protein, which if you remember, I said you, there is a structural protein called the spike protein. With this spike protein, this, uh, integrates inside the ACE2. And then what happens is that, then the interesting thing is that some people have seen that this is 10 to 15 times stronger affinity than SARS. So this is one of the reason some people are saying that it is much more infectious compared to SARS. So this interaction, this, uh, this, the strength of this interaction is very, very much strong compared to other similar type of viruses like, like SARS and MERS. And and then what happens is that uh, when it then it tries to integrate, and then one part of the this spike protein is called S1 gets released, and with this other particular protein, it gets in inserted inside the cell. So basically, this is a structure of the spike protein, uh, uh, the uh, 3D structure of the of the spike protein, and this is a 180 kilo Dalton protein, which is a very huge protein like to get the structure and and uh, there are some other proteins in, in, inside this uh, ACE2 receptor which helps it to cleave in this ACE2 protein then S1 is being cleaved and then it goes inside the cell now the interesting thing is that what is this ACE2 so what what does ACE2 actually do so there are so many people are saying about ACE2 receptor uh, so this is ACE2 helps in lowering the of the blood pressure it's expressed not only in the lung is expressed in the lung, artery, heart, and small intestine. So, so what happens is that not only patients who are dying, they not only uh, have infection in the lungs, but they have multi-organ failure. So this is probably one of the reasons why these virus can attack to other parts of the body also, wherever this protein is expressed, the ACE2 protein. So the, part, the work of this ACE2 protein is a protein called angiotensin 2. It, uh, this, this is an enzyme. And uh, this uh, leads to angiotensin, which is a vasodilator. So you can understand it helps in the lowering of the blood pressure. Okay, so uh, so next I would like to explain you that how this coronavirus generate the immune response. So, so if you can see that this is the structure of the lung. And uh, if you zoom inside the lung, then you can see that there is a, there's a textbook knowledge. I think many of you have read in your class 12 levels, that this is the bronchiolis and uh, bronchi, and then is the bronchiolis. And this is the, in the bronchiolis, you know, and there is arteries which come, which comes with the oxygenated blood. And, and here in, in this particular region, there is an exchange of gas which takes place. So carbon dioxide is ex exchanged with oxygen. And so, uh, so then you ex exhale the carbon dioxide and you inhale the oxygen. So here what happens is that this is the place where your ac2 protein is there so these viruses can come and attack in this region so what happens is that there are two different so in any case we have an immune system so all all of us have an Im so we are exposed to different kind of bacteria virus all through our lives so we are not getting infected every time so we have a kind of soldiers in our even in our human body, which is called the immune system. They take care of all these infectious agents. So there, are, this in, immunity is also divided in two different parts. One is the innate immune, system, in, innate immune response and the adaptive immune response. So what is the innate immune response? Innate immune response is suddenly, it will see any kind of enemy like a virus or a bacteria and try to immediately kind of kill them. Uh, 
so that it does not uh, infect the human body. And this is the innate immune system. And there is uh, there is another immune immunity called the adaptive immunity, immunity, where it tries to make antibodies. So, so the first of all, it will try to kill the virus, and then it will also try to remember the virus. For example, if they again come next time, so uh, our body can recognize the virus and then uh, and kill them. So, uh, so then you need to have some memory cells like um, uh, where it can remember that okay, uh, this virus have attacked me previously, so I need to be aware and and whenever this virus will come or bacteria will come, I need to kill them. So this is this is called the antibody response. So there is two different response so first innate immunity is the our first immune response and then comes the adaptive immunity so then whenever this thing happens so our body takes try to take care of the of the um, of the virus in this way then what happens is that so in the in this in this coronavirus case we have seen that uh, so this is a in a cross-section view of one of the bronchioles where you have an oxygen uh, gaseous exchange right so there is an early stage and there is a very uh, next uh, very late stage of, of this this coronavirus so you can see this is a capillary blood vessel where the oxygen oxygenated blood comes and here the uh, oxygen transfer takes place so here you can see that the almost all of the part of the uh, lung cells is almost empty so like easily you can exchange the uh, exchange the gases like the oxygen can transfer with the with the, with the carbon dioxide but what happens is that in the late stage there is a uh, the virus there is a huge immune response so the viruses are 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 kind of coming and the ace2 receptor can understand these things and then our body tries to give a huge immune immune response because of this thing huge amount of immune cells are are kind of gathered in this region so monocytes neutrophils and many other t cells and so then what happens is a site there is a concept called cytokine storm so these are all cytokines so there are huge amount of cells are coming and the body is trying to kind of cope up with the virus because of these things you you, you will feel a little bit of symptoms the symptoms would be fever, it could be some kind of uh, uh, body pain, all these things. So at this stage, the body is trying to fight with the uh, with the virus. But what happens is that some people have seen that there's a, there is a hyaluronidase, which is uh, the people who have died of this thing when they do an autopsy, when they, uh, when they do a cross-section of the lung cells, they have seen that there is a sticky or the fluidy layer which fills up in this in this uh, in this uh, this air sac and slowly uh, the whole whole air sac becomes filled up with this this hyaluronidase which reduces the amount of oxygen you can uh, do uh, you can exchange so at this point of time this becomes very much devastating when you cannot breathe so when you cannot exchange your oxygen i, I am talking about in the molecular level in the very low level uh, where the oxygen transfer takes place and when this thing uh, spreads to the all the bronchioles then the amount of oxygen you take is very less and so you will start uh, gasping for oxygen and at that time you need oxygen and then at the senior stage you, know, you might need a ventilation where your lung is completely incapable of doing any gaseous exchange you have to use a mechanical ventilator to keep your lungs working so it actually bypasses your lung and you are you are uh, you are you are alive in a in a completely artificial way and at that time you give a lot of medicines to kind of cope up with this cytokine storm. So this is what happens in the very severe stage. So th this is a very, uh, so in this right hand side, you can see a diagrammatic representation of the uh, how the time course, uh, how it happens. For example, in stage one, which is early infection, and the stage two is a pulmonary phase. So this is the clinical symptoms and the mild uh, constitutional symptoms like fever, 99.6 degree Fahrenheit, dry cough, diarrhea, headache, all these things will happen. And then in the, with the time course, then shortness of breath will happen, hypoxia, which is low oxygen amount, and abnormal chest imaging, and then low normal 
nitro calcitonin and these things and then uh, stage 3 is a hyperinflammation phase so when so in this this stage is a viral response phase and this phase is the host inflammatory response phase so in this at this time you know the host our body uh, immune system are becoming very much activated and at this time you are finding uh, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and then shock, then cardiac failure, and then elevated ele inflammatory markers, you know, interleukin-6, dimer, and ferritin, many other kind of interleukin, uh, you know, and inflammatory markers, will, like you can see, which, which means that the body is trying to uh, fight with the uh, virus. And at this time, the patient can die, and, and you need, uh, and, you, and you don't have anything to do with the patient. Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, next I would come to uh, come to say is that the uh, the modes of transmission. So so modes of transmission we know that there are various modes of transmission. So one is that if you can cough is a big picture where you can see the the aerosol can spread to the whole area, whole um, air, and this can spread to the if, if there is if there is any person who is in the vicinity that person can get affected with handshake by like talking with people like going to the bathroom like and then opening the door knobs buying vegetables uh like like touching uh, with your bare hands with your with your opening areas like nose eyes and all these things so these are the areas where you can get uh infected and now the things have become much more complicated you know in 1918 people did not travel so much but now people travel huge so this is uh, this is a picture where you can see the uh, the num these dots show the number of aircrafts which are traveling at one particular instance of time all over the world so we are hugely connected with the whole world so when, so if something happens in europe it can come very easily to the to india very easily or it can go to the us very easily within few days within a few months so the concept of pandemics have changed within the last 30 or 40 years or maybe 50 years where people have been traveling so so much so so this is some in, uh, information that in the virus is so difficult that it can uh, stay in the on the plastic and stainless steel for 72 hours on on the copper for four hours on the cardboard for almost less than 24 hours so you can understand this is so much uh, so you have to be very very much is careful uh, for uh, while you are uh, traveling and um, while you are uh, while, while this uh, virus has become so much uh, widespread in our country and, and other countries so uh, now i would like to say that how uh, so in this in this uh, case how science is doing like uh, so everybody uh, everywhere uh, starting from uh, railway stations to the politicians, the common people, they are now depending on science. How science can help us in this grave uh, time? Like there is economic meltdown and there is, we are all uh, blocked in our homes. We cannot do any work. Education system is failing. So, uh, so I, so what I have done is that I have tried to uh, divide the strategies to define the virus attack in three different phases, uh, three different ways. So uh, if you uh, if you hear Ajit Bhoval, who is a Indian uh, National Scientific uh, Security Advisor, he has somewhere given a lecture in Shastra, I think, through in South India somewhere. He gave a very interesting way how you can. Uh, Kind of cope up with your enemy. He gave three different uh, ways of kind of coping with the enemy. I also took this same idea and tried to find out how uh, we are actually developing uh, ways to defend the virus attack. So first is the defensive, and then is defensive as well as striking, and then is the striking. So what is so first of all we will like to talk about a defensive methodology. So so next is that. When you don't know anything about the enemy, when you don't know anything, so as as all of you know that this virus is very novel, we don't know anything about the virus. So what can you do? The only thing is that avoid them. So for example, and this, this is a schematic diagram which I showed that if if in, if in the four people only one person is infected, we try we need to uh, remove ourselves uh, from these 
particular people. So this is the concept of social distancing. So, so that we can understand that if 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 there is a, any kind of contamination, we can be sure that it is not coming to us. So how this can be done is that we need to go to our home and do in a kind of lockdown. We all know that. And the other other people, so all of us, we need to go for testing. So for example, we know that these two people have not got, any test, uh, not got the virus attack, so they can go back to home. And these two person can go to the hospital. And then, for example, amongst them, one person may die and the other person may get cured. And so at the end of the day, so all of them can again come back. And that is how the countries like China and many other countries like Italy and France, they also have been do, have been able to do in these things. So this is the concept of uh, when you don't know anything about enemy. So, uh, but so for all these things, you the most important thing is to do testing. So that is what all of the world people are focusing on. Do huge amount of testing. So this is there is a concept concept of test and trace, test and trace. So unless and until we get any vaccine, we try to. We have to uh, check how many people are getting affected, and we need to isolate them so that they are not coming in contact with the other people who are not affected. So that is the only way we can uh, we, we we can be sure that okay we can get some amount of uh, protection from the virus. Uh, so what the so what does an epi epidemiologist say? So epidemiologist says that, uh, so we have always heard that uh, the flattening of curve, what is a flattening of curve? So this is a concept and they say that the, we, without any measures, uh, the number of cases would have been very high, but it would come down also very fast because, but our healthcare, uh, uh, healthcare system would get completely, uh, uh, destroyed because we cannot handle so many patients. So that is the reason we have to go in for some measures so that we can, uh, so that is the reason why uh, like all of the country where there's so many uh, populated country, we have all gone from lockdowns. So that is that is how we have tried to do this flattening of the curve. And there are some, many of the people who say there is a lot of mathematical modeling which people do that uh, how can we do we can do a lockdown for 21 days some people say can they can do 21 days and then again for 28 days and then some people say lockdown multiple days multiple times so in between there should be no lockdown and some people say then complete lockdown for 49 days so there are different mathematical models with mathematicians and epidemiologists they try to do so it is it is all depends upon the country uh, like for example if there is a country where uh, where there is a very low amount of populations so there you can do do these things like you don't need to do any lockdown like south korea like so, some other countries like uh, sweden this these countries have done not gone into any lockdown because they have their own own kind of calculations. But in a country like India and in a country like USA, where there is huge amount of populations, you you have to go in for lockdown like China. Uh, so okay, so this is how we can go in for defensive. Now the concept is that what is defensive as well as striking. So so next concept is that we have to be defensive and slowly we have to understand what is the characteristic of the enemy how do they behave for example how many if if it would have been real fight then how many air bases they have how many soldiers they have how many navy they have so you just a little bit of information if you can get from the uh, from your enemy then you can be defensive as well as be striking at certain point of time so that is a concept of making a vaccine. So, the, the, so what is a vaccine? Uh, as uh, Bishadip, Dr. Bishadip Ghosh has already very uh, be beautifully explained is that, so vaccine is that you have to understand what is the major enemy. So, so the vaccine is, is like, there, there are many different ways to make a vaccine. So first, first of all is you can weaken the vaccine. So you can, uh, uh, sorry, you can weaken the virus or you can kill the virus or you can use isolated virus particles. So parts of the virus you can make. So you can train your body that like by giving small amount of those, uh, your enemy so that your immune system can recognize not a huge amount, but only the part where the 
where the virus is affecting your body. So now, now the important thing is that now that we know that the spike protein is the most important part, which is actually uh, uh, targeting our body. So we can make new kind of things. So with this last 50 years, the biology has uh, advanced in a different, in a very exponential way. So previously, what people used to do is that they used to kind of uh, weaken the virus, like kill them, give some irradiation like X-rays, gamma rays, so that the virus became uh, inactivated and then directly push the virus inside the, inside the human body. It could give some kind of good effects, but it could give bad effects also. Because in some cases, they could get a shock. They could get many things. But now, with the advancements of science and all these things, we are becoming more and more targeted. We can we can we know that how the virus, what is the behavior of the virus. So that is a reason why there are three different ways people have done. Like the one is called the plasmid, which is a DNA based plasmid, which I showed you previously. There is an RNA uh, thing, and there is an another thing called the virus itself. You can give the virus itself inside the body and then try to with with uh, with kind of low amount of those virus and try to uh, increase immunity okay so then we have to go for different kind of things like preclinical trials and like we have to test in the animals and then we have to check that whether it is too much toxic or not and there are a lot of regulatory things but this but this first part is a very time consuming process and this and next part is another time consuming process so that is a reason so if you want to have any uh, if you want to really know how a uh, vaccine is made are very kind of common terms. So there is a magazine called Scientific American. So the June issue and the July issue is given free of cost. You can go into these magazines. This has given a huge amount of information about this coronavirus. For, for the common people, it is a popular science magazine. You can read them. It's, it's a very interesting way they have given. OK, so, so then uh, what I want to say is that what is a vaccine? Vaccine is a substance which is used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against one or several diseases. So the idea is that to increase the immune response to a virus. So what is that? You somehow in, in these methods, you make, a, you make a vaccine and you in, inject inside the human body the human body will make develop immunity that means it will develop a lot of antibodies and then when the virus comes you will be protected from the virus because of this presence of these antibodies because they will remember the this virus and they will protect you by killing the virus i would like to uh, give in this in this time there are many ways of making vaccine development. I would like to give you some information about three different ones. One is viral vectors, mRNA, and DNA based plasmid. So, okay. So, next, I would like to say that uh, why a vaccine discovery takes so long to make. Okay. This is a, a slide which is from GlaxoSmithKline. You know, Glaxo is a very, GSK is a very big company who also makes a lot of vaccines also. So you can see that uh, many people and the common people will ask you, they have, uh, what are the scientists doing? Why are they not, why are they taking so much time to make a vaccine? So you must understand that vaccine is not a um, it's not like making a mobile phone or it's not like, even it's not like making a rocket. You are playing with human health. If something goes wrong, then everybody will catch you. It, 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 it's a, and it's a global human health. It's, it's not one person. So that is the reason why research takes place a long time. So one to 10 years takes to come to phase one and then phase two for, and then phase two and then proof of concept and then phase three and phase four. So this is a phase one is like, you, uh, you try on few patients, like 1,000 patients. And then phase two, you go in for 10,000 patients and then go for more and more patients. So then you have at every stage, there is a regulatory board where they will always check whether, okay, is there any bad effects on the human beings? Is there any anything bad on it? So this is, all these things takes a lot of time. But this 10 years, this takes, but comparatively, this takes a bit less time. So once it is filed, then, it it uh, does not take much time once once you get this phase three it is a just a matter of time to make a huge amount of vaccines we all have 
the, the companies are ready to make huge amount of vaccines. That is not a problem. But coming up to this phase three is a big is, is a big problem. Okay. So now next I would like to say of the viral vectors. So the viral what is a viral vector? So mainly uh, this two companies are making in this one is the uh, University of Oxford and the other is the uh, can sign of biologicals which is in China okay so University of Oxford which I know a bit uh, may, many people know so this is a concept called called adenovirus so adenovirus is a virus which affects us every year okay adenovirus is a kind of a flu flu uh, virus you know every time we fall sick because of cold it, it it is because of this virus okay but the thing is that in this virus there is a genetic material which i said is a rna okay now as i said this can be used as a vaccine this has been used as vaccine for many other diseases right so this is not very harmful to us right if if you if you inject this vaccine it is not it does not cause much harm, harm to us because we have been exposed to the virus for a long time Okay, so what can be done is that if you can, if you can do a very much interesting work that you can change somewhere in this gene, and you can incorporate the spike protein. You know the only protein which is required for the uh, virus to get inside. You just trans, you just change this gene into that gene. So that can be done very easily, right? So, so the concept is just delete some genes which is essential for the replication of the virus. So this virus, when you inject in the body, it will not replicate. It will just not replicate. So it is very much harmless. But what you do is that you fool the virus, you take out this genetic material, and you, instead of this, instead of this, some genes, you insert some other genes, which is actually causing for the, this coronavirus. So, but, uh, so when this, when this virus will go inside the human being, so, the protein will be there and the body will try to recognize di different different proteins and it will try to make immune response to all these proteins so amongst them amongst them it will also make immune response to the spike protein which is for, for the coronavirus okay so then it will generate antibodies so that is a concept that is a concept how they are trying to it's a very very much uh, 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 very difficult process to do it, very, very much complicated process, but this can be done and this has been done, okay? Uh, but the problem is that with this virus, there is a, efficiency is very less because what happens is that this virus, we know this virus, okay? Whenever you inject this virus, the body knows it and it immediately kind of kill the virus because, because they know the virus. So what these Oxford people have done is that they have tried to use another virus, the same kind of virus, which is from a uh, ape, right? From a chimpanzee. So that is why it is called Chadox, Chad uh, with CH, then AD and for adenovirus and Oxford one, right? That, that is how it is named. And then in this, in the same way, they have incorporated, they inserted the spike protein, but this has a low immunogenicity and high transient persistence. So it can persist in the human being for a long time. Okay, so that's how they have done it. And then uh, that's how I explained to you. They remove the gene and then insert your spike protein inside inside this thing. And then insert it inside 500 different people. So one of them is a 500, 500 people have got the Chadox vaccine and 500 got a meningitis vaccine. So meningitis vaccine is not very much, uh, it's 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 kind of a control you have you always have to give a control so first first you have to give the virus and also on also you have to give a control vaccine to check whether it is actually actually doing anything good or not okay so so the, so phase one has all, already been done and you all all know that phase one trials have been a big success so there is a lot of antibodies have been produced and there is a phase two which is uh, with the volunteers which is age 56 to 69 and some people with 5 to 12 and then phase three will be done for above 18 anyone right okay so these people they don't know which vaccine they have been given are they are the given the Chadox vaccine or they are given the meningitis vaccine. So, so this is a single blind experiment. So, but the doctors know it, whom they have given it. So this is done by Sarah Gilbert, uh, who is actually um, uh, heading this uh, process with, uh, and this is done in this institute with, with the University of Oxford. So, 
so this is one uh, this is one vaccine which has been in the uh, in the field for a long time and the, the so the other problem is that you know the vaccine when you when you do in a vaccine when you inject a inject a vaccine you need to be exposed to the virus now england has already reduced the number of people who have been infected so that is a the reason they have to send they have to do the clinical trials in some place where there is a huge prevalence of the virus so they have been doing in brazil usa and kenya and i recently heard that they will also do in india also okay the, the collaborating industry astrazeneca is doing in in the uk and in india the serum institute is also trying to make once this vaccine is successful they will make huge amount of this proteins okay and so another one is i would say the dna based vaccines there is another one many people are doing the inovio which is also in the us so this is they have taken the gene the dna of the spike protein and directly inject inside the uh, you can see in this picture inside the human human being with a with a thing called a gene gun kind of thing you know this is a according to the company it is a its technology improves the gene expression of the dna plasmids by 100 times so whatever be it so so dna uh, so dna plasmid is another another way of doing this there is a um, you, you can in, you can take the spike protein inside this dna and then insert insert it inside the body so um uh, so they they are saying that uh, they have the rechargeable devices and could be ideal for mass vaccination purposes. It can be used it for very easily, right? So the trials have been done in the mouse and and the guinea pig, and they have been done in the phase one and phase uh, two and three should be done in August, right? If you want to read more about this, you can go into this website and you can read about this uh, the concept of the vaccines. Okay, uh, and. What I said was that if you, if you remember in the first slide, I've said you DNA, RNA, and the protein. So RNA is a middle one, right? So if you if you inject RNA, it could also be good because you are directly in, injecting an intermediate stage. So basically, that is the same way people have been trying to uh, do the genome sequencing. You have to sequence it genome and then make the RNA spike protein of the mRNA using a lipid nanoparticle. Uh, and you can inject inside the spleen, right? So this is a place where you, you get all the uh, lymph nodes and all the immune cells are produced over here. So whenever this has been injected and this will produce huge amount of immune response, okay? So th this is called the mRNA1273. So this is also a good method which they are trying to do, but they're also saying that RNA vaccines are less stable than DNA vaccines. There are many pros and cons, you know? Uh, they, they have to be, uh, common enzymes can can degrade. It has al also be always be taken in the low temperature. You know, it, uh, like to transport these vaccines would be difficult. It would increase the cost and all these things. So, but they are also trying to do the phase three trials. We're starting starting this month. Okay, uh, so so this is another way they are making the vaccines. So. Uh, just to give an idea, the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine is the biggest challenge in the global health and prosperity since World War II. You can, you can understand it. Uh, by early uh, April, 80 companies and institutes in 19 countries were working on the vaccines, right? And the labs predicted that the commercial vaccine could be available for emergency or compassionate use only by early 2021, right? You, you cannot make it very fast. You always have to keep human health in 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 your mind because if some ill effects happen then it's not it's of no use right so for example ebola vaccine which to which is fast track took five years to reach widespread trials so uh the sars cov 2 does not mutate very quickly as influenza it it mutates it does not people have seen that it does not need it as quickly as influenza uh, they suggest that if an effective vaccines if it comes it might give prolonged protection for a longer time uh, so, but like, even if it comes in 2021, it will be the fastest vaccine development in history. So we are lucky that half of our work has been done in the last 10 years. That is the reason we have been able to push it for just within one year, we can do it. Okay, so this, this is a this is a uh, diagram represented how many people are doing in different uh, vaccine de development. You can see virus, nucleic acid, protein based vector. There are many other vaccines which have been produced. Okay, okay. Uh, next, what we want to do is that when we know very well about our enemy, we can directly strike them. You can go with our aircrafts and then strike them, whatever 
you you have all your um, uh, soldiers and navy and all these things so that is a thing called striking so this is a fast method right when you when you when you don't have any other ways like you are seeing many people are dying what you can do so three ways to make the coronavirus drug in a hurry right so first is that as i said you virus virus has to be replicated to grow one way is to block the viral replication so there are ways the uh, viral replication can be blocked okay and the other way is that it can prevent entry in, into the cells so so you can prevent the virus to go inside the cells right and the third way is to reduce the hyperimmune response and acute respiratory distress so always you have to remember that there is no proven drugs for sars cov 2 right the concept is that repurposing of drugs so if you have some drug which has been used for some other disease you can do a trial and error to see whether it it has also the same effect in your sars cov 2 also right so that is the reason all these drugs you know remdesivir i will come to this later uh, so all these drugs are actually made for something else these are now used for the covid 19 okay okay so first of them is a copy stopper so, so basically the concept is that when you have a virus you try to stop the growth of the virus right so so remdesivir was actually made for ebola it is it did not give good results right but sars and mers it gave good results so this is a concept called adenosine nucleoside triphosphate analog this is a kind of chemistry that don't, don't need to be uh, worry about it so this this particular drug it blocks the you know as i say to this is an rna virus it needs it needs to replicate to the rna only so this is done by a enzyme called rna dependent rna polymerase right this helps him to replicate the rna to rna so this drug actually blocks this rrdp right this is the proofreading activity of rrdp this is a, the special part of rrdp but in general it blocks the rrdp and so the so this if the rna is not produced then there is no virus right so this is a decrease in the viral production so phase 1 and phase 2 have al already been done and phase 3 trials were being done i, I don't know i i am not updated Probably one thousand patients. So, Gilead is a company which is a U.S. company which is actually making this protein, uh, and Cipla, along with the institute called IACT in Hyderabad, they are making this drug. And as as I heard yesterday, that Ciplenivir is a is a one which they have used in the, from August, like it will be used for patients who have severe symptoms of of the coronavirus. Okay. and there is another uh, 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 drug called favipiravir which is uh, which is also uh, which is which also blocks which is made by the toyoma chemicals which is made for influenza which was made for uh, also stopping the rna dependent rna polymerase uh, like the previous one this also leads to the decrease in the viral load so as on 2020 20, 26 dgci approved the use of flaviflu on mild covid patients at rupees 103 per pack tablet which is not quite less like for the common people to afford but still they have uh, approved this thing in the hospitals right and uh, on 20 to 29 2050 they approved for hospitalization treatment in the russia right and they have also, also trials started in the uk and china so faviflu is made by an indian company called glenmark and this is being used i think in in the hospitals if the if there are some doctors they might know about it okay uh now the concept concept is a block infections the second category is that you don't even allow the virus to go inside the cell how you can do it there is a concept is so you can make a protein called apn01 which is a recombinant you can make an artificial ace2 protein right you can make it by by modern biological techniques this protein can be made so what this do, does is that it it will leave the actual ac2 protein of the bronchial epithelial cells intact whenever you inject these things and then these things will be killed right and the cell, and the cells will be killed in this way it will form as a precipitate and it, and it will kill and uh, it, yeah uh, so the virus will not be uh, so the, the, there will not be enough virus to attack the ac2 receptor so this is the you know, concept which has been in the phase 1 and now i think in the phase 2 so this is done by apiron biologics if you want to read more about it you can go into the website and then read more about apn01 okay 
and then uh, there is another concept called the convalescent plasma therapy you know so what is convalescent plasma therapy so as i said you that there are some people who are asymptomatic right they don't have any external manifestations of any virus that means that they have already developed an immunity in them that means they have some antibodies inside them so you have to collect these people these asymptomatic people or someone who have recovered from this this covid 19 so how you can do it you can take the whole blood and then spin at a high speed right for 500 rpm or something like that and then what happens is that the cellular part of the of the blood it will form as a precipitate and the liquid part which contains a plasma you know this this is 55 percent of plus it contains all the antibodies so you can take this thing and you can purify it there are various methods of uh, kind of purifying the antibodies uh, and you can purify them and then you can inject the con the people with this antibodies so what will happen is that because this person have already made antibodies for this virus this person will also these antibodies will also attack the uh, this virus and this person will get cured okay so this is a very good method of uh, uh, of doing this thing but the problem is that you need to have huge amount of these people to get this uh, these antibodies you need huge amount of persons uh, who wants to donate their blood for this purpose and and uh, it, it's it's not easy to get it right so the uh, the other thing is that genentech is a company is a roche is a is a us company is a basically swiss company so they have been doing a very uh, interesting work like with sequencing antibodies um, monoclonal antibodies like like i know because it it is done by mass spectrometry and i was i was interviewed for this uh, project by genentech once in my uh, after my phd uh, so they are trying to sequence the antibodies uh, for monoclonal antibody. Okay, so th this is a very, uh, very difficult task because the antibodies are not produced by the genetic, by the genes, right? They have all they are they are changing according to the environment. So so the so sequencing antibodies is a very tough task. Okay, so anti SARS CoV monoclonal anti H H I G is done is the TAC eight 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 is a Takeda Pharmaceuticals, I think it's a Japanese company. They are making, uh, they are trying to make large scale uh, amounts of these antibodies. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, so you can go to the website and see this thing. And there's another one called the reduction of the hyperimmune response. This could be used by Toclizumab. There's anti IL 6, the same like APN01. So if you have a soluble IL 6, it can, uh, so for example, uh, single transmission, there is an inflammatory storm, but if you add toclizumab, the, the IL-6 can get blocked and then uh, the inflammatory storm can be calmed. So this is another way to reduce the immune response. So, there is many, so because you know there is a huge immune response, you can reduce the immune response. It is another way of, of kind of coping with the, uh, of the vaccines. So, so patients who are suffering from ARDS and ventilators, they have been given this thing. And okay, so there is another thing called the hydroxyquinoline, which is an anti malarial drug, and dexamethasone, which is a steroid drug. This has been done by a large scale uh, randomized control therapy in Oxford, which is called the recovery. So they have clearly said that uh, there is no clinical benefit for use of hydroxy in hospitalized patient for COVID-19 and FDA withdraws the emergency use of authorization of hydroxychloroquine, okay? Uh, but they have seen that dexo dexamethasone, which is basically a steroid drug, okay? First life-saving drug in uh, COVID-19, which is a big, big breakthrough. It is a glucocorticoid, which is commonly used anti-inflammatory steroid drug. It is used in the severely ill patients with, with ventilations, with a with mortality decreased by one third, which is a very big thing, like uh, and patients with oxygen by one th one fifth, but did, did not show any improving effects on the mild conditions. And this drug is widely used in treatment of asthma, arthritis, and lupus. It's cheap if it is actually used. It's very cheap. In India, we can we can get this medicine very easily, but it needs to be administered very 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 much uh, and uh, cautiously uh, because it can give some ill effects because it's a steroid drug. Okay. Uh, what is India's role in the COVID-19 research? So COVID-19 research, India has not never also been one of the big players in the in, in the vaccine discovery, but making vaccine is a very expensive one, you know, and there are a lot of 
uh, a lot of different hurdles in India to be, to go in for clinical trials for a new vaccine entity. So Biocon have given a DCGI not for a drug called ito itolizumab, which is a uh, psoriasis drug, which is anti-CD6, right? It has given some good effects on, on some people. So Bharat Biotech and ICMR uh, NIV have uh, started an ambitious project of developing an Indian vaccine called Covaxins. Uh, and uh, Serum Institute, which I already said, with um, working with Oxford for making vaccine. And uh, another thing which India has been doing a lot is in the basic science research, right? They have been trying to understand why is this uh, virus so much uh, infectious. They have been trying to do the genome sequencing, the full genome sequencing of the of the of, of this of these viruses. So they have already done 53 genome sequences by uh, done in IGIB and TCM. It is at two different big uh, institutes who have been doing this in, and 361 genomes have been sequenced till 25, 25th of March, uh, May, and the DBT is more uh, 1,000 genomes novel sequencing within IBMG Kalyani and many other places, right? Uh, India Immunological Limited is also in a kind of collaboration with Griffith University developing a live attenuated vaccines. So four steps to avoid the COVID-19, wash your hands regularly with soap and water, or rub with your hands with 70% ethanol, uh, find, and then cover your mouth and nose while sneezing and coughing. Avoid close contact with anyone who has cold or flu like symptoms. If you have a fever, difficulty seek medical care. So, finally, I would like to say that you know uh, we are all locked up in a in 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 our homes for maybe three or four months. Some of us can go for work. Some of us are not allowed to go for work. Some of us have to go have to work from our home. So I know one month you would like to be very happy at home, like it's a, it's a vacation for you're spending with your families. But you know, as many of you mentioned from my previous speakers, that there is a psychological and the behavioral problem in many people like who are, who are sitting at home for four or five months. So I would like to say that when there's when there was a lot of flu um, or pandemics during the earlier times, you know, the, you know, this guy, this this person is called Isaac Newton. OK, and this is Shakespeare. So they have they have developed a theory of gravity and King Lear. He wrote the King Lear when he was locked down at his home. So the so the idea is that do something creative. And this is a very good option for learning online courses. So there are huge amount of online. You can learn any any number of things like from online. Now it, it's a it's a huge advantage for all of us to learn from uh, the, the use this opportunity to uh, uh, to to learn many things. You can learn new languages. You can learn new computer languages. You can learn uh, you can learn painting. Many other things like okay. Uh, we all must wait for one day when uh, when we will get uh, these vaccines. So, uh, but we always have to de uh, depend on science. Uh, so, science has given us everything. Uh, up, uh, uh, so, so up up till now. Uh, so whatever we have done in the fifty years uh, of our research, we should give back to our um, back to our kind of community what we have done in fifty years. And this this is our time to proof as scientists that how we can kind of contribute. So I would like to give two uh, 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 words which two big scientists have taken, uh, said to my uh, young audiences, uh, like young students. So nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood, right? Now it is a time to understand more so that we may fear less. This was said by Marie Curie. And another, another word which I really like is what I cannot create, I don't understand which was said by Richard Feynman. So unless and until you create life, you will never understand how life works and how anything works. Like you, if you cannot create a mobile phone, you will never know how a mobile phone works. So that's that's the lie, that's the thing. And so biology is very, very much complicated, very, very much complicated. It's, it's more complicated than anything which we have done. So we have to understand it, okay? So with this thing, I would like to, uh, Thank uh, Dr. Shuman Odhikari and Dr. Ankan Sinha and Dr., uh, the Department of Chemistry and Harmonagar for allowing me to give uh, this lecture. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for a, such a updated and uh, means informative session, sir. And thanks again for sharing the uh, thoughts whichever you have shown uh, in your last slide. 
that is meant uh, a lot for us so thank you once okay. again sir and you have we have few questions for you there are many questions but uh, due to the time constraint uh, we are not going to ask you so we yeah. will focus on questions that is asked by hasan pavel hasan i think and dilip malakar they they have many questions bipro debroy ritu moni they have asked lots of question but i will ask only two that okay. is hmm can i protect myself from infection with a saline nasal rinse can i protect ourselves uh, uh, can we protect uh, ourselves through saline nasal rinse from this virus I, look the thing is that uh, I, uh, i cannot comment on it because i i i don't know because this is a completely medical term uh, so what i can say from my basic science is that if is anything working with a high salt uh, concentration can kill like any any kind of bacteria or any kind of cell can be killed by any high salt salt concentration so if you if you if if some amount of viruses or some some kind of you know uh, thing is there inside your uh, inside your throat or something then um, because of the high salt or concentration or salt low ph or something it can kill i but i i don't know about it i cannot comment on it yeah okay hello uh once hello. again ha uh, ha hello the vaccine for cancer and aids not discovered will it be uh, the same case for covid 19 they need your opinion sir uh, uh just pardon oh, oh, just once again the can you tell me for cancer and aids not discovered yet will it be okay. the same case for covid 19 um mm, vaccine for uh, aids it i don't think so it it will be so difficult because we because we have been very successful with sars uh, and to some extent with mers and uh, because uh, because you know the oxford virus was actually very successful with, with ebola and they have been doing this thing for because this is a this is an influenza kind of a virus like right? so we know a it's it's not that completely unknown but we know a bit about about their um sequence and and their behavior I, i i am very much optimistic that i i think that it will not be that, that difficult we will we will get some amount of benefit it's not it's not that um uh, like hiv we don't we don't have uh, it it's not that it's not that i oh, i think okay, so we okay. will get some uh, means uh, uh, does the virus affect the sense of taste means uh, do you have any yeah. information about this yeah it, it is one of the uh, symptoms what who has also recommended that there is a loss of taste loss of loss of smell but how exactly the molecular mechanism how it works um i don't know because because the thing is that even if you uh, even if you have a lot of cold or a lot of uh, thing you sometimes lose a lot of taste something like that so it could affect the taste receptors or the smell receptors which is present inside the nasal sim, uh, nasal things uh, so that shows that it probably affects in the same way like the like the cold the, the, the coronavirus affects almost in the same way so but always it is not a uh, definite thing definite reason but it is one of the symptoms so i i, I would say that uh, some people may have some people may not have so you just have to be uh, just uh, uh, if, if there are some symptoms then i i, I think you must consult a doctor uh, then oh, what what are the symptoms like fever cough dry cough Uh, are the major symptoms like fever is one of the major symptoms like you should have but in some cases uh, you might not even have fever so and and in some cases you might not even know that you have a coronavirus so that is uh, much more uh, dangerous so you might so th that is a problem with the virus yeah i think you got your answer so uh, thank you thanks a lot sir for explaining everything so minutely i would say that it was a complete a to z for uh, explaining the concept of covid-19 and its prevention 
you have shown yes, a new theories to fight against this virus sir so thanks yeah. once again sir and for accepting our request sir we will meet again sir thank you sir thank you thank you namaskar sir Uh, kindly unmute your mic sir hi okay sir now uh, we are proceeding towards the last lecture of the international webinar uh, that will be given by none other than dr pradeep debnath presently he is working as an assistant professor in department of chemistry maharaja bir bikram college agartala he did his post doctoral uh, doctorate from university of antwerp belgium in 2012 and 2013 he is awarded with many many awards like dst young scientist research award in 2016 fwo fellowship government of belgium in 2012 dr krishnapillai memorial award for securing the first position in bsc chemistry honors examination in 2000 and many more are there and apart from that he has completed one ugc and one dst serb major research project he is the reviewer of many more than six international and national journals so without any delay before that before i, I would li uh, like to ask him to present his presentation i would like to uh, clear something to the participant that uh please ask the question from the topic only whatever the resource persons are going to present or presenting in front of you and more than that uh in this situation attend it very sincerely because in this at the end of this lecture you will get the feedback form and according to that you will get your e certificate you have to follow each and every topic very minutely for filling up the feedback form so be patient thank you so i would like to request uh, dr pradeep debnath sir to carry on with his lecture sir please sir uh thank you sir <coughs> thank you uncle sir uh, for uh, nice uh, introduction uh first of all i would like to uh, may audible sir yes sir just you have to uh, you need to uh, slide show go for slide show sir otherwise okay. it is okay yeah. now it's perfectly okay sir thank you sir uh, okay so first of all i would like to thanks uh, my friend and organizing secretary uh, dr shuman adhikari and other uh, organizing member of this uh, uh, international webinar uh, for inviting me to present a, a lecture Uh, in this uh, webinar so actually i am a synthetic uh, organic chemistry and my research interest mainly uh, on the synthesis of uh, nitrogen uh, containing heterocycles of uh, biological interest uh, but uh, due to the uh, lockdown since uh, from march uh, synthetic laboratories totally closed uh, so uh, uh, the chemistry department of mbb colors thought that we can start with the, uh, some uh, Uh, computational study, and uh, we did some work uh, with the, uh, some uh, natural uh, data bank and using the Indian spice uh, spices, and also we find out some uh, output re result. Also, we find uh, find out uh, from the Indian spices uh, which spice is uh, active, uh, which spice can uh, uh, combat the uh, pandemic situation of the COVID nineteen. So, I will present all these things uh, in my. Uh, presentation and the title uh, of my presentation that I select that uh, utility of uh, natural products in uh, combating COVID-19 pandemic situations. So uh, in this presentation, mainly I will uh, focus on the natural product compounds and uh, with the special reference with the uh, spice compound, how the spice uh, compounds uh, uh, can uh, combat the uh, pandemic uh, situation can be used, how they can be useful. Uh, Uh, for the uh, covid protection covid protection 
before going to my uh, main uh, part of the lecture that is natural products uh, first of all i will give the some uh, uh, introductory uh, part uh, regarding the uh, search cop to regarding the viral disease and uh, other things and the some uh, pre existing uh, health condition and covid 19 disease how the uh, other uh, uh, disease if some have other disease then how the covid 19 disease affect uh, that persons and the mechanism how the uh, search cop to the disco numbers enter in our uh, body uh, how they uh, enter in our cell and then some important protein of the search cop to that regulate the viral uh, life cycle uh, because this is very important to understand the uh, lecture and some uh, potential natural product that can inhibit the proteins of uh, search cop to and Work done by our group MB Bikula Jagartala. That is, this two point is very important in my lecture. This is uh, how the natural product uh, can inhibit the uh, uh, proteins of the the proteins of the search cop two and what we have done uh, already uh, uh, by using the uh, virtual skinning uh, method and uh, what we uh, problem we face uh, during the drug design for the uh, search cop uh, two. So all the things will be covered uh, one by one uh, in this uh, lecture. So uh, this is the uh, outbreaks of the viral disease. Uh, several viral diseases uh, uh, are uh, already outbreaks in their different uh, times, like Asian flu, uh, Spanish flu, Hong Kong flu, and this uh, two that is March and March two virus flu is very very important because these two flu are uh, related with the uh, SARS cov uh, two. And swine flu is 2009 and 2013-16 Ebola viruses are. Uh, the outbreak and originated in uh, Africa and had killed almost uh, with all these viruses, almost million and million people killed in, uh, all over the world. So, uh, is the coronavirus is new? No, coronavirus is not uh, new virus uh, because scientists uh, first identified the human coronavirus in 1966 and it is originated from the uh, bat and uh, it is not so dangerous because it caused only a common, common cold. And later in that decade, uh, researchers uh, found uh, several similar human and animal viruses. And all coronaviruses, the word this uh, coronaviruses comes from the Latin word is corona, which means uh, that is crown because it is looks like a crown uh, shape, a crowns like appearance, and that's why uh, it is called the corona uh, viruses. And till now, there are seven human coronavirus species can infect the human, uh, including the uh, SARS CoV, uh, which is uh, uh, originated. Uh, uh, in uh, 2002 and March, uh, which is outbreak in 2012, and in 2019 is uh, search cop 2. And all these uh, coronaviruses are uh, genetic in nature, that is, they are originated from the uh, animals and then uh, it passed to the human uh, body uh, through the, an intermediate or any uh, without any uh, intermediate. So, among these uh, human coronaviruses, uh, search cop, uh, which is originated uh, from the China. Uh, is very important and it's an intermediate uh, host is the civet cat and another is uh, related with the search cop 2 is the march cop that is a uh, march cop 2 which is a uh, march cop uh, which is uh, originate uh, uh, spread in the uh, saudi arabia and the mortality rate of uh, search cop and the march cop is very was very high in case of search cop uh, it was uh, almost 10 percent Although it is die only uh, 7, 744 uh, people, and whereas in March COP, uh, it is mortality rate is uh, approximately is uh, more than uh, 35%, and it, it is death uh, cases was uh, 8, uh, 858 people. So, all these are the uh, uh, coronaviruses, human coronaviruses, uh, what affected the human uh, life in previously. And uh, search cop and March cop, all these two coronaviruses is uh, originated from the uh, bat and uh, comes uh, to the human uh, body uh, through the civet cat and camels. But there is a big question uh, regarding the uh, search cop 2, how the search cop 2 comes to the human body. And it was uh, observed from the uh, genomic uh, analysis uh, that the search cop 2 genome has the similarity with the pangolin and uh, bat almost is 91.02% uh, and 90.55%. Uh, so, uh, scientists uh, are uh, concluded that uh, it may be come from the uh, bat and intermediate uh, host may be a pangolin, but it is not still 
uh, uh, shivan uh, after the uh, this uh, uh, attack by the attack to the human body so it is spread to human to human that is person to person then community spread occurs uh, and under emergency condition uh, hospitalization now it is uh, under the severe pneumonia uh, condition hospitalization uh, is occurs now it is uh, in a dangerous zone uh, so uh, uh, before going to the uh, my uh, main presentation uh, i'm just giving the outline of the uh, coronaviruses actually coronavirus are uh, positive sense uh, rna virus single strand rna virus and with the largest uh, genome size and uh, it recognizes as highly evolving virus uh, with the high frequency of the genomic uh, recombination and uh, mutation actually there uh, belongs to the uh, corona virus of family and the corona virus family having the four uh, genera is alpha beta gamma and delta and sars cov 2 belongs to the beta coronavirus uh, like the march cov and uh, sars cov and it is uh, transmitted uh, mainly spread from person to person through the uh, droplet and uh, it can exist uh, in several hours on different type of the surface uh, like copper it can exist in 4 hours in uh, cardboard it uh, can exist in up to 4, 24 hours and plastic and stainless steel it uh, exist uh, two to uh, three hours so this uh, study uh, gives uh, the, uh, an idea uh, how the coronavirus can exist in different uh, uh, surfaces uh, and in copper it is uh, exist at least only only four hours so uh, lesser time but in cardboard it is uh, 24 uh, hours and normal culture uh, that is uh, uh, the name coronavirus uh, initially it was uh, the name was the Nobel Coronavirus 19, and later on, uh, the name was uh, designated as uh, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, that is SARS CoV 2. And uh, the disease caused by this virus is uh, known as uh, COVID 19 uh, disease, uh, that is called for coronavirus uh, disease uh, 2019, since it is uh, originated in the December of 2019. And it is a uh, respiratory tract uh, infection disease. It can infect the upper respiratory tract, like sinus, nose, and throat. And lower respiratory tract, uh, 0.5 lung address. And it spread the same way other like other coronavirus, namely uh, through the person to person contact. And it is very, very, very uh, uh, contagious uh, virus. Now, what is the uh, pre existing uh, uh, factors? Uh, who are the in risk, uh, high risk factor? Uh, so, anyone can get uh, by the infected by the coronavirus. Anyone can get infected and can get the COVID 19 disease. But the older who has the higher risk uh, of severe illness and the higher chance of the serious illness of uh, if you have uh, one of the following health conditions like uh, chronic uh, kidney disease, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, we can uh, immune system, obesity, serious heart condition, coronary artery disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, liver disease. If someone is uh, suffering uh, from this, any one of these uh, diseases, they have. Uh, uh, high uh, risks there uh, may be uh, suffer uh, from the severe illness and high chance of the serious illness and a study uh, it was observed that if someone is suffering from the uh, cardiovascular disease uh, and if uh, uh, so the group uh, group of people is uh, uh, suffering from the cardiovascular disease and uh, uh, they are infected by this uh, coronavirus then 10.5 percent uh, people are dead those are suffering from the uh, cardiovascular disease. Those suffering by uh, from the diabetes, they have a chance 7.3 uh, percent. This is the uh, case study with the 44,000 uh, uh, COVID patients. So, if uh, uh, there is a pre-existing uh, coronary respiratory disease, then it's 6.3 percent people may die. But the overall uh, fatality rate is uh, in below the 2 to 3 percent. But if uh, someone has the pre-existing SARS diseases, then the fatality rate is there. Uh, very very high that is 5.6 6% 6 6.3% 7.3% and 10.5% uh, so those people are suffering from this uh, uh, pre existing disease like cancer hypertension the high blood pressure and coronary respiratory disease diabetes and cardiovascular disease they have a uh, very very uh, risk uh, if they are attacked by this uh, coronavirus then they, uh, there may be a chance for the serious uh, illness even the uh, the, uh, the death conditions they can reach. And this is the present uh, scenario. Uh, it is uh, actually this uh, graph is taken on 23rd July, just uh, two days ago. 
and uh, uh, in that day almost in india there was 12 blocks uh, 41654 uh, people are infected and today report is almost 13 lakhs uh, 12 was 87000 and death cases uh, above 30 lakhs uh, to death case. and the group, uh, global global case is uh, almost uh, 1 crore 50 plus 47 more than uh, this amount of uh, people are infected and uh, death case is 6 lakhs 23860 Three. If you see the uh, daily new case uh, globally, it is now slowly a little bit uh, graph is little bit uh, slowly increasing. But in case of uh, India, if you see the daily new cases, uh, graph is uh, sharply increasing day by day. It is increasing. Today's report is that uh, almost fifty thousand uh, people are infected in twenty four hours. So we can imagine the situation day by day has become very very odd. And uh, if we uh, compare the death uh, situation, uh, daily new death, uh, in globally it is a little bit uh, decreasing, now it is steady, but in India it is uh, gradually uh, increasing uh, day by day, and in case of Tibra, in daily new cases uh, also increasing. So it is very, very alarming situations all over the world uh, still now. Uh, in coronaviruses, there are uh, uh, four. Uh, Structural proteins, main uh, four proteins, uh, the spike uh, glycoproteins, envelope uh, proteins, and membrane proteins, nucleocapsid uh, proteins, and uh, at least four non structural proteins, uh, such as uh, uh, three uh, chemotrypsin uh, like proteins, uh, uh, which is known as CL uh, proteins, CL pro, and this is also known as the main proteins, that is AM pro, that is the uh, uh, main proteins of the uh, coronavirus is uh, another uh, non toxin protein which is very very important for the drug discovery is the uh, peptide like uh, uh, proteins that is which is uh, in short is known as PL pro and the helicase and RNA dependent RNA, RNA, DNA polymerase that is RAT, RP. Uh, these are the four non toxin proteins and these are the uh, for tactile proteins. So these uh, tactile proteins and non tactile proteins play a very, very crucial role in the viral replication process. So if we block any of the protein by using any small molecule, if we inhibit uh, any step of the replication process, so we can, uh, will be successful to control the uh, spread of the coronaviruses and we can uh, get the uh, remedy from the COVID-19 uh, diseases. So, what is the role of this uh, uh, of these different uh, proteins? So, I am giving in a short, uh, shortly how does uh, what is the role of the spike protein? Actually, uh, spike protein is very very important protein of the coronavirus because it binds with the surface of the host cell. Actually, uh, this spike protein binds with the uh, with our cell with the help of uh, angiotensin converting enzyme, which is in short is known as SE2 enzyme. This SE2 enzyme is produced by uh, our body and the spike protein of the coronavirus is uh, bind with this uh, uh, enzyme and uh, a recent study shows that that like SARS-CoV, SARS-CoV-2 is also able to utilize the SE2 uh, as an anti receptor in SE3 expressing cell. So, SE, search cop as well as search cop 2 both are utilizing this SE2 uh, receptor uh, to entry uh, as an entry point in our cell. So, this spike protein of the coronavirus is very, very industrious and it, it is bind with, the, uh, with our cell through the SE2. So, this is very, very important protein for the uh, viral entry in our cell. Another uh, two important non structural uh, protein, I'm just mentioning the uh, roles. There is a pepper like protease, it is PL pro, and main protease, uh, which is uh, known as a CL pro. And these two proteins mainly claim the polyprotein of the uh, polyprotein of the coronaviruses and to produce or produces non structural proteins uh, from uh, that is non structural proteins P1 to uh, uh, P16. And these non structural proteins are uh, play a very uh, crucial role in the. Uh, viral uh, replication uh, processes. So, uh, if we interrupt any replication process, uh, would become a potential molecular target to develop the therapeutic against the coronavirus. So, scientists are targeting uh, this uh, type of the proteins, spike proteins, pepper like proteins, main proteins, and the uh, NSP proteins uh, to inhibit uh, the activity of this uh, protein so that this, uh, the replication process of the coronaviruses may be uh, con uh, may be controlled. And this is the uh, uh, schematic diagram of how the coronavirus is uh, uh, entered in our uh, uh, 
uh, in the body. Actually, this is the coronavirus, and this part, this part is the uh, lower part is our uh, cell, and this is the uh, spike protein of the coronaviruses. And spike protein has a two domain: S1 domain and S2 domain. Actually, the uh, the S1 domain of the uh, spike protein is bind with the SE2 of the cell, and uh, and with the help of the Purine and TMPRSS, that is uh, which is uh, is a transmembrane proteasin two. Uh, this uh, two uh, two enzyme in our body uh, on the exterior of the host cell are thought to break the spike protein. It is this two uh, enzyme help to break this uh, spike protein and, and, and uh, to help the uh, to enter the uh, coronaviruses in our uh, body. And uh, this uh, fusion allow the virus RNA to enter the host cell where it gets uh, translated into its protein. This is the RNA translation. And the foreign RNA hijack the ho uh, host cellular machinery to produce the RNA and the proteins that get the uh, assembled uh, into a new uh, uh, virus particle. And this new virion, uh, this new virion particle is uh, uh, produced in our cell and then it is uh, uh, escaped from our uh, cell and spread in our uh, body. Just I am uh, showing one video how uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus is. Uh, uh, this is a video uh, how this uh, this is the coronavirus how it is uh, bind with. This is the binding of the spike protein uh, and uh, uh, with the SE2 of the uh, uh, SE2 uh, enzyme of our uh, cell and uh, so uh, there is a strong binding uh, with the uh, Spike protein of the SE2. So it is entered uh, in our cell. Now uh, it is in, in, in our cell. Coronavirus is in our cell. So it is releasing its uh, uh, structural proteins. Now it is hijacked our uh, already our uh, cell. It is already hijacked our cell and producing its RNA. And it produces uh, another coronaviruses and now it is evolved uh, now it is evolved from the uh, our cell and capture our whole body so this is a, a video of uh, how the coronavirus uh, uh, actually uh, enter in our uh, body and uh, this is the four organ uh, in our uh, body is in high risk uh, why this four organ in in high risk uh, one is lung, uh, another is uh, heart, kidney, and uh, uh, intestine is our uh, in very very in high risk in our body because these uh, four organ is attacked by the uh, coronaviruses uh, in, in the first phase. What is the reason uh, behind that? Why this uh, four organ is attacked? Because uh, this SU2 expressing cell is uh, present in our lung, present in our uh, heart present in our kidney and the coronavirus is entered through our mouth nose and uh, uh, even also in eyes so yeah, so it first attack uh, comes in contact with the lung and that's why lung is the uh, uh, lung cell is contains uh, this se2 uh, lung uh, cell is the se2 expressing cell so coronavirus first uh, comes to the lung and since the lung cell contains the se2 enzyme so it can easily bind with the lung cell and in enter your uh, lung and infected our uh, lung and that's why the lung is infected uh, very fast but there is uh, there may be risks with the heart there may be risks with the kidney because uh, all this uh, uh, organ all, also the all, all the cell of this organ is also the su2 expressing uh, cell so all these organs are in very very high risk uh, uh, by the coronavirus now, how? Uh, uh, what is the possible option to combat this uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19 uh, disease? There are several uh, options to combat the uh, the situation. Uh, the one, the uh, the ultimate situation, ultimate uh, solution is the vaccine discovery, and uh, uh, with the vaccine discovery and the human trial. Uh, uh, my senior uh, Vishwarupda Vishwarupda uh, Gurda and uh, uh, the, the, uh, told about the in details about how the vaccine is working in our body, how they are developed. So we, I am working with this small molecule, uh, drug molecules, uh, and especially uh, from the uh, drug molecules, uh, from the molecules which is comes from the natural uh, sources. 
So uh, these are the uh, the protein structure, almost 249 proteins of coronaviruses in uh, different uh, binding with the different ligand. There is 249 uh, uh, protein of coronaviruses already deposited in the uh, drug data bank. Among these uh, 249 uh, proteins, the spike proteins, envelope protein, membrane protein, nucleo capsid protein, protease, helicase, these are the very, very important protein because people are working to target with this protein, how this protein can be inhibited. If we inhibit this type of, any one of these uh, proteins, so we can uh, combat the situation, we can uh, inhibit the activity of this uh, protein. So by designing the proper uh, small molecule from the natural sources or from the any FDA approved drug data bank or any other data bank, if we find out any small molecule that can uh, inhibit the spike protein or envelope protein or membrane protein, any one of the protein, M pro, CL pro, PL pro or helicases, then uh, it will be very, very effective to uh, control the viral replication uh, in our the body and to combat the, this uh, uh, situation. These are the few drugs, uh, uh, the FDA approved drugs, food and drug administration approved uh, drug. Uh, this is the remdesivir, uh, which is used for the treatment of the uh, COVID-19 uh, patients, but this uh, Renbisibir, Chloroquinone, Etonavir, uh, uh, Fepiravir, Azithromycin, and Hydroxychloroquinone, Lipanavir, Epitol, all we are know about this uh, drug. These uh, type of the drugs are using uh, as a ad hoc basis. These are not a permanent solution for the treatment of the COVID patient because these drugs are not the uh, actually for the SARS-CoV-2. These are used for the other diseases. Uh, it is not specific for the SARS-CoV-2 uh, because uh, uh, just my previous uh, lecture, Remdesivir, uh, 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 why Remdesivir is used for uh, for for what purpose Remdesivir is used is mentioned. Chloroquinone is used is for the or malaria treatment, but uh, if this medicine is uh, used with the combination uh, like remdesivir with the chloroquinone or remdesivir with the uh, hydroxychloroquinone, then there is a little bit some uh, good effect, good result on the COVID patient. But this is uh, not the ultimate solution for the treatment of the uh, COVID patient. And only the, uh, at all observe that a combination of the three drugs, not a single drug, combination of the three drugs, namely uh, lupinavir, uh, Ostimavir, uh, Ritunavir shows the better binding energy with the SARS CoV 2 main proteins than the individual, uh, individual drugs. Uh, any one individual drug is not uh, so effective, but the combination of these three drugs is more effective than the individual drugs. But all these drugs are under uh, clinical trials. No drugs are clinically approved. The clinical trials are currently on, uh, going ongoing to determine the full efficacy spectrum of this drug in the patient. On the other hand, several researchers uh, have their paid attention to find out the potential molecules from the natural sources that may be active in the search cow too. Because uh, in our flock medicine and from our uh, medicinal history, we found that several medicinal plant compounds have been used as a good source of the antiviral drug. And the drug which is uh, uh, found from the natural sources has minimal side effect. They have less side effect to the human uh, body. So uh, keeping uh, this idea in our ma uh, mind, we, uh, uh, we start to work and we select Monport uh, uh, database uh, which is available in online and which contains 1,13,687 uh, drug molecules uh, which is commercially available. And we perform the virtual screening of this uh, database uh, by using Glide. Glide is a software, is a module uh, software. And after the virtual screening, we found the six potential inhibitors, six potential among these 1,13,687 molecules. Only six uh, molecules uh, shows their uh, potentiality to inhibit uh, the uh, search called NSP, that is the NSP non structural protein, NS, uh, NSP3. Uh, this non structural protein is inhibited by these uh, six uh, molecules. And this is the glide score, where uh, glide score is the, uh, is the parameter uh, by which uh, we can understand which drug molecule, which molecule is uh, uh, which has a, a strong binding affinity with the target uh, protein. And the negative value indicates, higher the negative value indicates that. If this molecule 
Yeah, this molecule has a strong binding affinity with the target uh, protein. If you see the binding affinity of the six molecule, six molecule has a different binding affinity with the NSP3 of the SARS-CoV-2. The compound one, uh, this first compound, they has the binding affinity is minus 14.684. This binding affinity minus 14.64 is very, very uh, good binding affinity, is very nice binding affinity because this below indicates that it uh, may uh, inhibit the uh, uh, NSP3 of SARS CoV 2. This, uh, this molecule shows a little uh, slow, uh, lower binding affinity than the, uh, this molecule. And on the basis of the binding affinity, we see that this molecule, first molecule and the last molecule, these two molecules shows the 14, minus 14 binding affinity and this molecule shows the minus 13 binding affinity. This indicates this, among these six molecules, these two molecules has a stronger binding affinity with the uh, NSP3 protein of the SARS-CoV-2. So if we inhibit the uh, NSP3 uh, uh, protein of the SARS-CoV-2, uh, so we may inhibit the function of this uh, NSP3 and as a result we may inhibit the replication process of the SARS-CoV-2 in our uh, body. So this is the important, this is the beauty or this is the utility of the of this uh, mo molecules uh, to inhibit the uh, replication process of uh, SARS-CoV-2 in our Body. So, how this uh, uh, work is done? What is the workflow for the, to find out this uh, six uh, potential uh, molecules from the one lakh uh, molecule? Uh, initially, we find out the uh, seven features e pharmacol for uh, by using the crystal structure. Uh, it is available in the data bank. Among these uh, 249 uh, protein data bank, this protein, uh, crystal structure of the, this protein, there is crystal structure of ADP, ribophosphatase of NSP3 of SARS CoV 2 also available in the protein data bank. So we retrieve this uh, protein uh, structure from the protein data bank and we find out the uh, common pharmacophore. Uh, uh, of the uh, protein ligand complexes and by using this ligand based virtual screening uh, we reduce the number of uh, molecules from 1 lakh to 6025 molecules and this molecule is matched with this uh, at least 4 pharmacophore of the 7 pharmacophore. Then we use the structure based virtual screening. And this structural based virtual screening, uh, during this structural based virtual screening, we use Quipro and other uh, programming, uh, Leblowski role, you know, all of the uh, reactive uh, uh, group. These are the computer programming, and uh, ultimately we get uh, 400,895 molecules. And after uh, finally we selected six molecules having the glide score. Uh, uh, minus 11.0. So this is the workflow, how we work with this uh, large number of the molecules, 1 lakh of uh, 13,687 molecules. This is uh, just a workflow, it is a computer designing program. So ultimately we get six uh, uh, molecules having the good binding affinity and these are the uh, interacting amino acid uh, of the uh, NSP, uh, NSP3 of the protein. Uh, the, these are the following uh, amino acid are the uh, bind with the uh, six molecules and on the basis of the uh, glide, glide score, this compound and this compound shows the high binding energy uh, with the uh, NSP3 protein of the SARS-CoV-2. And this is the binding pores of the ligand with the protein. And from the picture, it is clearly uh, clearly shows that the, all the molecules are inserted into the cavity of the protein. The protein are very, uh, uh, there is a cavity in the protein. So all the molecules are inserted into the uh, uh, protein of the molecules and they exist in the uh, in the uh, cavity. So this may, this uh, the, all these compounds can maybe inhibit the function of the NSP3 and thereby maybe uh, protect the replication, maybe stop the replication of the coronaviruses in our uh, body. So these are the six molecules very, very important uh, in our uh, research output. And now I am going to the natural products, how the natural uh, sources can be utilized as a homemade remedy, uh, homemade remedy to protect the uh, attack from the uh, coronavirus. This uh, picture shows that is a tea leaf and in the tea leaf uh, there is a two compounds. This compound is very big molecules uh, but it is a simply a gallic acid ester which is available in the uh, tea leaf. It is also a gallic acid, a gallic acid ester. It is also available in the uh, tree leaf. And these two compounds have a strong binding affinity with the main proteus of the SARS-CoV. 
it is not the work is not published with the sars cov2 it is working uh, this uh, this two compound shows the strong binding affinity with the sars cov since the genomic there is a genomic similarity with the sars cov and the sars cov2 so this compound may be effective with the sars cov2 as well so if you take regularly uh, uh, t so uh, in the tea there is this two compound and this two compound is help to inhibit the main proteas of the sars cov as well as the sars cov2 and the author observed that is black tea is more potent than the black green tea so black tea is more uh, effective in that case than the uh, green tea this slide uh, described uh, the tulsi it's very very common in every uh, in everybody how there is a tulsi tea and the neem tea and research, uh, recent research study uh, is a virtual screening study shows that tulsi leaf contains three compounds this this and this i am not going to the its normal culture i am just showing this structure of this uh, uh, three compound these three uh, compounds available in the tulsi leaf and they can inhibit the spike protein and the main proteins of the sars cov2 so if we use regularly tulsi leaf so there is a chance to inhibit the spike protein of the uh, coronavirus so this uh, 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 spike protein is very very important because without the binding of the spike protein coronavirus cannot be entered in our body so if we anyhow if we inhibit the spike protein then the coronavirus cannot be entered in our cell so it cannot be uh, infected us so this three molecules uh, shows the high binding affinity with uh, the spike protein as well as the uh, main proteins next the neem leaf neem leaf also contains this three protein neem leaf also contains this three protein additionally neem leaves contain this uh, this compound additionally uh, along these three compounds neem leaf also a additional compound which is known as a Uh, gadolinium uh, shows the binding affinity is 9.4 kcal per mole with the main proteins of the sars cov2 so neem compound and neem leaf also have the compounds those can bind with the main proteins of the sars cov2 so if we take the neem leaf regularly there may be a chance uh, to inhibit the activity of the main uh, proteins so we can take the neem leaf we can take the tulsi leaf because all these are available in our uh, house and we can uh, protect ourselves uh, by natural way uh, from the attack of the uh, coronavirus this is the recent work uh, with the neem leaf uh, they have selected 70 compounds which are available in the neem tree uh, they are not working with the one or two compounds they are, uh, they accumulated uh, the 70 compounds which is available in the namely and investigated the potentiality of this compound this 70 compound they investigated the potentiality of this compound against the main uh, against the membrane protein and envelope protein these proteins are the structural proteins of coronavirus uh, in my previous slide i uh, told that there is a four structural protein in coronavirus uh, among these membrane protein and e protein are the structural protein of the coronavirus so among these 70 compounds they investigated the potentiality of the compounds against the membrane protein and envelope protein and they also performed the molecular docking result study uh, and found that these three compounds among these 70 compounds available in the neem only three three compounds uh, that is namely nimbolin a nimbosin and the seven d benzyl uh, gadolinium can inhibit the e protein and m protein of the coronavirus the all these are in silico studies computational studies after the in vitro studies in vitro studies this type of the compound uh, may be may be effective uh, to uh, inhibit may be uh, effective to inhibit the main proteins or the spike protein or the membrane or the protein but uh, in the meantime we can take the regularly neem tea and uh, neem leaves uh, we can take uh, regularly tulsi leaves because neem tulsi has the antiviral property we know all these things the uh, neem tulsi has a very vast antiviral pro the property and this compound is a uh, boicalin and uh, 
this is the boikalin uh, this uh, boikalin is very very this compound is very very enriched it, uh, in this uh, fruits uh, the scientific name actually it is a vegetable uh, and scientific name of this vegetable is oxalium indica and the local name is thona it is a uh, it is available in our local market and this vegetable is very very rich with this uh, boikalin compound and yesterday morning i visited an electronic bazaar and i found that this uh, uh, oxalium indica is available in the electronic bazaar and it is the delicious food of tribal or uh, tribal tri tribe communities they are taking regularly this uh, uh, this uh, vegetable in their uh, diet so this uh, compound this, this compound this compound uh, shows the strong binding affinity with the uh, with the uh, main proteas of the coronavirus so this vegetable is very very uh, important because uh, this uh, vegetable in this vegetable there are some other compounds also available which shows the anti cancer activity which are uh, active uh, against the breast cancer so this uh, uh, vegetable this is thona is locally named uh, local name is tona and it is a very very rich in uh, organic uh, molecules uh, which inhibit the blood cancer as well as uh, uh, the in silico study shows that it also can inhibit the cl pro of the sars cov 2 another group uh, also uh, study with the antiviral phytochemicals they also found that boikalin again boikalin uh, boikalin uh, uh, Active, uh, inhibit the main proteas. The finding is the same, but the source of the compound was uh, different. In the, they also reported that uh, this boycalin can inhibit the, uh, the, the main proteas of the SARS CoV 2. This group also uh, reported that boycalin is, uh, uh, can inhibit the main proteas of the SARS CoV 2. This is the black sheet, is available in every day. In, in our uh, everybody's uh, home and uh, this uh, Ahmed et al uh, observed that in uh, uh, black seed uh, there is a compound which is a diquinone uh, di compound uh, which is uh, known as diethylmoquinone and shows a strong binding affinity with the SE2 SE2 is in our cell so this uh, compound can inhibit uh, the SE2 uh, of the of our cell so if we inhibit the seu2 of our uh, cell then spike protein will not be able to bind with the seu2 because uh, spike protein will not get the uh, seu2 because it is already binded with this type of the compound so uh, the spike protein can uh, throw the binding with the spike protein coronavirus cannot uh, be entered in our body we are also working with this uh, uh, black seed and we found this another compound because uh, another compound which is a uh, protect uh, which is uh, uh, inhibit the uh, pl pro of the uh, coronaviruses and i am not uh, disclosing the what compound is uh, of uh, black sheet is uh, inhibit the pl pro of the uh, coronaviruses because the manuscript is under uh, preparation we are going to communicate uh, within two or three days uh, in an international journal uh, the, our findings uh, regarding the uh, black sheet but the black sheet so black sheet has two compounds one compound is uh, inhibit can inhibit the the se2 of the, the our uh, se2 enzyme of our cell and another findings, our findings, it can, uh, the compound can uh, inhibit the uh, PL pro of the uh, uh, coronavirus. And this is the uh, cur uh, curcumin uh, available in term uh, turmeric and also bind with the uh, main proteas and the spike protein. So uh, cur curcumin uh, compounds also had, uh, has the ability to bind with the uh, proteas and spike protein of the compound. The same group also work with the uh, ginger. They also found that in ginger, this phenolic, uh, phenolic compound is a uh, flavonoid type compound, uh, is also able to bind with the main uh, proteas. This uh, compound is very important. This is a galangin type compound, galangin compound, phenolic type compound. Uh, it also uh, uh, has uh, the property uh, the, uh, to uh, regulate the growth uh, inhibitory property of the uh, breast tumor cell. And this compound, this flavonoid compound is available in citrus uh, food and other fruits and herbs. And this uh, compound also able to uh, inhibit the uh, proteus and spike uh, protein. So if we take uh, uh, this turmeric, uh, ginger, uh, citrus type uh, <coughs> fruit uh, in our diet uh, regularly, 
uh, then uh, there is a chance to bind with the, uh, this type of the molecule uh, to bind with the uh, spike protein and, and, and the uh, main protease of the uh, search cow too. These are the few uh, curcumin type uh, compound uh, are also able to bind with the uh, main protease uh, of the uh, search cow uh, too. And this is very, very important. Uh, garlic is uh, recently, only uh, two weeks ago, in SES uh, Omega in 2020, only two days ago, uh, this paper is uh, published uh, uh, that in 18 active substances, it's not one to 18 active substances, including 17 organosulfur compounds are available in the garlic. Among these 18 compounds, 17 organo organosulfur compounds uh, accounting for the 99. 4% content of the garlic essential oil. So these uh, 17 organo uh, sulfur compounds, almost uh, 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 the whole the uh, essential oil of the uh, garlic oil uh, contains these 17 compounds and have strong uh, interaction uh, with the amino acid of SE2 protein, again the SE2 protein and the main protease of uh, the search cow too. So these 17 compounds, they have a, a different binding affinity uh, with the SE2 protein and the main protease of the search cow. Uh, and these are the 17 compound, uh, 18 compound, or they uh, identified this uh, compound by using the uh, GC analysis, that is gas chromatographic analysis. By using the gas uh, chromatographic analysis, they, they uh, reported these uh, 18 compounds. Among these 18 compounds, this di, uh, uh, allyl disulfide uh, shows the highest binding affinity uh, that is uh, 15 minus 15.32 kilocalorie per mole with MPRO and uh, minus 12.84 kilocalorie with the uh, SE2. And trialyl uh, uh, trisulfide release the energy minus 12.7 kilocalorie. That is higher the negative value of uh, uh, the binding energy. That is the energy releases uh, after the binding, greater the stability of that compound into the cavity of the protein. So this dialyl. Uh, sulfide disulfide, uh, allyl disulfide compound shows the uh, binding affinity, uh, strong binding affinity with the AMPRO because it releases minus 15.32 kilocalorie per mole uh, energy releases during the uh, binding with the AMPRO. And this is a uh, few Indian uh, uh, plants available in the mountain and uh, uh, shows the uh, shows the, the active, inhibited activity with the AMPRO. This compound, this compound is very, very common to us. Uh, we, everybody who know origin, origin tree. And this compound is available in the origin tree. So this is a, a glycosidic uh, uh, ester of the or, uh, originalic acid. And this uh, originalic acid shows the minus 7.8 kilocalorie per mole and uh, binding affinity with the uh, uh, main protease of the uh, search cow 2 so originally uh, glycosidic ester of the originally acid also has a binding affinity with the uh, protein which is available in the uh, origin uh, tree and this uh, work is also published uh, by Omer et al in 2020 and uh, uh, we work with the uh, 10 uh, indian spices uh, mainly onion garlic it is actually our work uh, we work, uh, we selected 10 Indian spices which are regularly used in our uh, uh, in our uh, cooking. Uh, uh, we select onion, garlic, black seed, turmeric, ginger, uh, methi, red chili and peppermint, black pepper and uh, cumin. These 10 spices we selected and along among these 10 spices uh, we collected from the literature 1070 compounds. So we uh, use camera structure. We use the software camera to draw the all the structure, 1070 compound structure. We uh, draw individually, we draw all the structures and perform the uh, virtual screening by using three uh, glide software. Three software uh, Glide, uh, Autodoc 4.2, and Autodoc Pina because uh, to eliminate the uh, false uh, positive. And we found that uh, in Onion, there are four compounds. This, 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 and this first four compounds is available in the onion. Among these four compounds, two compounds can bind with the M pro inhibitor of the search cow 2. And these two compounds can bind with the spike inhibitor of the search cow 2. These four compounds is available in the onion, and this compound is available in the methy that is fenugreek. Uh, fenugreek is methy, and this three compound can inhibit the 
spike uh, spike uh, receptor of SARS CoV-2. Actually, it is a, a partial work of our. It is not a total work. It is a partial work of our findings, and we communicated uh, this uh, piece of the work in the journal of. Uh, 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 Tactical and dynamic journal of molecular structure and uh, dynamics, uh, electoral Francis journal. Uh, it is under uh, revision. Uh, so this is the 2D and 3D and binding course of the uh, with the EMPRO. These two compound is binding binds with the EMPRO, and this is the binding course. Uh, from this uh, uh, figure, uh, we can see that uh, these two molecules are well uh, enter into the cavity of the uh, EMPRO. It is well situated, well occupied the cavity of the uh, M group. Then shows a strong binding affinity from the molecular dynamics. Uh, it is also observed that this uh, binding uh, affinity protein ligand interaction also uh, very stable protein ligand interaction. And this is the last three molecule uh, which bind with the spike receptor. And from this figure, it is also clear that all three molecules with show uh, the strong binding affinity with the spike receptor and molecular dynamic study also shows that the binding is very stable protein ligand binding is very stable so uh, we face some problem uh, due, uh, during our uh, research because the, in the main proteus uh, it is a structure of the main proteus the red portion is the uh, terminal portion and the green color is the binding site this is the binding site and after a long simulation performed by our group uh, shows that the greener, uh, greater flexibility in the binding site uh, result shows the, uh, uh, in greener, uh, green color is a, there is a very uh, flexibility uh, in the uh, green site so binding uh, to the binding with this uh, site is very difficult as we know that low structure as closely bind and uh, frequently changes its conformation it's frequently changing its conformation and make it, uh, it uh, very difficult uh, to design and uh, a suitable drug against this uh, uh, the virus. So this phenomenon is also observed in other uh, SARS coronavirus uh, protein. And moreover, the uh, limited number of the still now limited number of the laboratory with biosafety standard makes it difficult to conduct the in vitro and in vivo studies uh, with a small molecule against the uh, SARS CoV two. And this is uh, our uh, publication. Uh, this uh, work uh, already uh, uh, in press in the chemistry select. Uh, and this uh, work is. Uh, Actually, this work with the Indian spices is part of the uh, of the work of the Indian spices. Just we reported one part of our work because uh, lots of results we uh, find out after the simulation. So it is a part of our work uh, which is communicated with the Journal of Biomolecular Structure and Dynamics, and it is uh, under uh, revision process. And this uh, uh, paper is communicated with the coronavirus, and this paper is the initial Journal of Medicine and Oncology. Uh, in international uh, journal. So uh, ultimately, uh, now uh, we can uh, stay uh, safe and stay home. We should use the marks uh, every time when we are out of our home, with the outside of our home, and we should uh, uh, should hand wash uh, our hand uh, frequently with soap or any uh, uh, other any hand washing uh, reagent. And uh, thank you, uh, thank you uh, all uh, for your kind. Uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much, sir, for a wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, we have uh, uh, many questions for you. You'll ask which we, uh, which are asked by Rajiv Devnath, Sushant Priyashan, and Janatui Islam. I will ask few questions. That is, does hand sanitizer actually works hundred percent? Uh, uh, hand sanitizer actually in hand sanitizer there is a 70% uh, alcohol uh, it is a, a very very essential the uh, percentage of the alcohol if it is the hand sanitizer contains 40% 50% alcohol then it will not be all but if the hand sanitizer contains more than 70% alcohol concentration and if it contains any other uh, oxidant like hydrogen peroxide and the moisturizing agent like uh, glycerin uh, so it it will work because uh, uh, the glycoprotein of uh, the uh, sars cov 2 it's coronavirus which is uh, it is a glycoprotein uh, which is dissolved by the alcohol so the, the action of the uh, of the uh, hand sanitizer actually depends on the concentration of the alcohol. If the yes. alcohol 
which will continue certain concentration, then it will work. But it will not work the whole day. If we use the sanitizer and after uh, uh, 10 minutes, it will be evaporated. So then it will not work. We work with the uh, When you are coming from the outside, so you, uh, you should uh, sanitize your hand with use the sanitizer. When you need, you just uh, use the hand sanitizer. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, very true, sir. Now, one more question. What is the actual degree of temperature for killing the coronavirus? Is there any certain uh, temperature where uh, uh, corona can't survive? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, it may be higher temperature because it room temperature that is 36, 37, uh, 40. I don't think it will be or uh, it will be start. It may be required uh, more than 60 degrees, 70 degree temperature. Otherwise, it will not be disturbed. Okay, okay, sir. So one query is that um, means between uh, as per you between hydroxychloroquine and interferon alpha two B, which one is better? Is it, it is uh, these all are asked by the students, our students. So they have some queries as per you, which one uh, which can be the better? But it's uh, all depends on the fact. Hydroxychloroquine uh, uh, it has a side effect. Uh, uh, because it is a side effect in our uh, heart, but uh, with other drugs, uh, I don't know uh, the idea uh, how it is uh, work in our body. But uh, but hydroxychloroquine has a side effect, so that's why uh, it is in, uh, it is recommended. Uh, if the doctor is recommended, uh, then we can use only the hydroxychloroquine. Otherwise, we cannot uh, use because it, uh, it has a side effect. So. Uh, Anybody cannot be used uh, the hydroxychloroquine without any advice of uh, doctor doctor advice. And single dose, uh, single singly hydroxychloroquine is not effective. It actually using uh, with uh, in combination with the uh, azithromycin and uh, hydroxychloroquine. Azithromycin actually is the antibacterial work in uh, throat, uh, you know. Uh, so these two combination is work better. Then the individual had to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, responses. Uh, it may be the last lecture for this webinar, but the question showering by the participant, it shows how impressive it was, sir. So it was really nice presentation, sir. Uh, and you saw the, uh, some natural uh, means med meditative values, medita meditation values of natural food, which we, what we easily get. Uh, from our surroundings. So it has some importance, sir. And thanks the, uh, for accepting our request, sir, in such a short notice, sir. Uh, so thanks again, sir, for the power packed presentation full of facts and knowledge, sir. So uh, thanks thank again, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle, sir. Thank you, Shuman, sir, for giving thank me a you. chance uh, to share our work here as well as the other words regarding this. Uh, uh, Indian spices, especially Indian spices, and with, along with the other natural. Uh, Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you Thank very you. much, sir. Now, the participants, we are moving towards the end of this two days international webinar. Uh, uh, with very heavy art, uh, I would say that we are going towards the end of this program through the closing ceremony. So, we are going to start the closing ceremony. Meanwhile, you got all the feedback links uh, you may get uh, from the groups too. So do, no need to worry if you are not getting the feedback uh, link then you can get from the groups too. So uh, now we are going to start uh, the closing ceremony. Uh, so again, very good afternoon to all the panelists present over here and all the participants. Uh, we welcome you in the closing ceremony of uh, two days international webinar on pedagogical approaches uh, to combat COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges, which is, uh, you know, that uh, which is organized very well organized by the Department of Chemistry, uh, GDC Dharmanagar, in association with uh, NAC, GDC Dharmanagar, and IGNO Study Center 2602, GDC Dharmanagar. So we have witnessed um, many tremendous and very wonderful, awesome uh, presentations given by different eminent personality of India and even from abroad. So first day we have covered we have covered three lectures in the form of keynote address and two technical session lectures. The first was 
given by uh, Dr. Posun Priyo Nayak, sir. Uh, he focuses on the main key points of this uh, whole webinar, that is uh, the pedagogical approaches to combat COVID-19. He explained everything in a very efficient way that how the coronavirus infect us, how deadly it was, how it spread and how to identify the coronavirus and how to avoid it and protect it. It is the complete package of, about the coronavirus. So thank you, sir, for presenting such a uh, nice keynote address. Then we move towards the uh, uh, technical session one with uh, first lecture given by Mr. Ashish Kumar Rawat. He focuses on physical literacy, a window to new horizon. He explained everything, how attitude can be the influencer through negative and positive experience, how it can be the influencer for anyone, how challenges we should take. It should be realistic and achievable and how individual is unique and should be appreciated. We came to know to, to nurture the physical literacy. So these all are the facts and the points he had covered. Then we have witnessed the lecture given by Dr. Sanjay Kumar. He has taken South Korean preventive measures to combat uh, to COVID-19. He explained the, that the, uh, the scenario is same in everywhere, means for every country. But the only thing is that infrastructure matters. And even more, that the implement, implementation of that infrastructure is very important, along with the digitalization. And they have shown that he has shown that uh, five star objectives and the KCDC, how to how it works in their country, that is South Korea. And he focuses on triple T, that is test, trust, stress, and treat. These all are the points they have he has uh, covered. After that, on the second day, we have started the day with a great lecture given by Dr. Biswajit Biswarup Ghosh on vaccine development and challenge a clinical trial. He focuses uh, the origin and history of vaccine. Then he represent he presented all the different kinds of vaccines came to know through this lecture. How one can be prevented from disease through vaccination? How does vaccine works? How one can get herd immunity? We uh, heard the term uh, heard the term that what is herd immunity? He explained very nicely the present scenario the present status about the development of vaccine he presented that one too so thank you sir uh, we have covered this much of uh, things from his lecture then we move towards the present presentation given by professor kumar abnezer k uh, he explained everything he mainly focuses on the main theme focal point of that this webinar that is pedagogical approaches and literacy and learning in higher education system, a post COVID-19 challenges. He explained the basic things very clearly. He perfectly explained the key points of this webinar. He explained the fundamentals of learning and teaching. He explained about the pedagogical analysis too. He explained behind uh, the uh, learning concept what is the learning con uh, pyramid what do you understand by learning pyramid how to improve the teaching skills it may be online or it may be offline so he focuses on that point how education system looks like after covid 19 after uh, means end of this area means uh, covid 19 how will be the education system so thank you sir for presenting such a nice presentation then we move to the second last presentation of this webinar which uh, which was given by dr uh, buddhi sato saha sir he has focused on a, has a taken a topic known as covid 19 treatment avenue and vaccine he mentioned and ma uh, major uh, viral outbreaks the lethality of coronavirus how lethal the coronavirus is. How does coronavirus generate immune responses? He explained the strategic strategies to defend the various attacks 
and he also focuses on drug development for covid 19 so thank you sir and then we move towards the last presentation which is which was given by dr pradeep sir he explained the things in very accurate manner very precise manner he focuses his, he has taken the utility of natural products in combating covid 19 pandemic situation he explained about the evolution of coronavirus how it transmitted and he suggested the role of protein in various uh, replications and uh, transcriptions focuses on possible option to combat covid 19 he also explained very clearly the concept of drug repurposing was explained perfectly so thank you we have covered all these lectures and uh, sessions with our eminent personality now i would like to introduce to you all the president of the ceremony dr uh, dilip sarkar sir uh, uh the principal government degree college and i would also like to request him to uh, deliver his speech sir, for the participants please sir good afternoon to everybody i am very happy that uh, well, with the help of uh, all the uh, participants and the organizers we are going to uh, Close the today's international webinar. Uh, thanks to uh, the experts who have uh, given uh, their special time, and also at the time, uh, at this time, uh, some of the people who are very much busy, they have come forward to uh, help us. Personally, I am very much happy that. Uh, uh, that type of international webinar has been uh, successfully completed, or going to be completed very soon. And uh, throughout the globe, throughout the world, uh, many participants, many experts have expressed their views and how to combat uh, coronavirus, or what we have to do and what we should not do. Especially the pedagogical uh, methods uh, related with the uh, uh, students or the learners, how to uh, use that situation uh, so that we would not be afraid of, rather we will be very much cautious about the uh, dangers uh, posed by um, coronavirus or COVID-19. So in this situation, uh, we are lucky enough that we are in a position to uh, organize that type of uh, today's international webinar with the help of uh, our students, our uh, colleagues, and uh, the academicians and uh, at this moment i am very much happy because uh, that is a memorable day for me that uh, i'm shifting from this institution to another institution and uh, i express my gratitude to everybody uh, who have helped me to uh, uh, work here with great satisfaction and uh, in that situation also uh, we have been trying to do something for better for the society, especially to the students. That type of uh, occasion came in my life uh, whenever I was uh, moving from another college to this college. Uh, the last day uh, I was moving, and uh, at that time also we were organizing a national seminar. So uh, these two days, uh, especially this day, is very much uh, remarkable for me, memorable for me. It is the time to express my gratitude to everybody uh, that uh, in order to organize this uh, seminar, to complete the seminar in a very uh, successful manner and to uh, move forward in future. So uh, with these words, uh, once again, I express my gratitude. Thanks to everybody. And uh, please uh, try to do uh, something for the learners, our future, and also for the society. And at least uh, I hope that you will keep in your mind myself for some time, if not forever. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Whenever you are come to talk uh, for giving speech, that will always means praise us, and, and that is praising us every time, sir. And that will motivate us in uh, future, sir. So thank you for your 
uh, great wishes and good wishes sir and uh, uh, always having the supporting hand behind us sir. so thank you sir okay thank you Uh, now we are at the verge of completing the uh, program. We have uh, lots of support from uh, many other faculties too. So uh, now I would like to request the heart and soul of this program who had uh, uh, worked day and night for this program is none other than the organizing, the organizing secretary of this program, of this international webinar, Dr. Sumon Odhikari, sir. And I would like to request him to uh, present the vote of thanks and conclude the program, sir. Please, sir. Thanks, Dr. Ankonshina. It has been very fascinating and spellbinding last two days. And I think we have learned so many new things from this webinar. Respected dignitaries, honorable resource person, respected principal, sir respected colleague, dear participant, and my dear beloved student. On behalf of the Department of Chemistry, Gov Degree College, Dharmanagar, NEC, GTC, DMR, IGNO Study Center, Gov Degree College, Dharmanagar, and Organizing Committee, I feel immense pleasure to take this opportunity to propose vote of thanks to our chief guest, Professor Onujoy Shahasar, who take his time from his busy schedule to grace this occasion with his extremely valuable lecture on COVID-19 pandemic. Sir rightly talked about the opportunities and challenges we are facing in this situation. I extend my gratitude to Sri Shajib Bahid sir, Director of Higher Education, Copt of Tripura for his thoughtful lecture. I take this opportunity to thanks Dr. Kiran Shankar Chakraborty, Director Igno Agutra Regional Center for always encouraging us and providing us opportunity to organize such an event. I, I would also like to thank Dr. Dilip Sharkar, Principal, Gov Degree College, Dharmanagar, for always motivating us and helping us and supporting us to organize this program. My deep sense of appreciation and thanks goes to all the resource person for their wonderful lecture and sharing their knowledge and thought with us. Last but surely not the least, I'd like to convey my gratitude to Dr. Ankon Sira for hosting this event. Thank you all for being with us. Have a great day ahead. Namaskar. Thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, vote of thanks. Now, uh, we are hoping that we will continue this kind of activity in future, sir. So we need your help and support and uh, means request you to conduct this kind of activity again and again, sir. So uh, now we are uh, at the last of this program. So uh, I would like to request all the participants and uh, the viewers that please excuse us if we done a, a, did any mistakes. It may be some technical or it may be some manual too. So for so, sorry for that, for the inconvenience, if you, know, you uh, found any problem, but uh, I assure you that in the next time we will continue the good work, sir. So all of you, thanks. Thanks uh, again and bye-bye for now. And we will meet in some other platform. So goodbye.